Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. In the name of the Lord. Every time you come before God's presence, it's important to come with an expectation. It's easy to get familiar with God's presence. Hallelujah. Your respect and honor for God's presence is not automatic. It takes a conscious cooperation on your own part. To realize that every time you show up before Him, He has something new for you. Hallelujah. It is that revelation and that consciousness that keeps you. So that no matter how much of him you know and you see, there will be a longing from within for more of him. Tonight, Lord, show us something we have not seen before. Teach us your way. We humble ourselves in the name of the Lord Jesus. Spirit of truth, we give you free access. And we pray that you bless us. Change us transform us we are that army we are that victorious generation the ones who will bring glory and grace to your name the ones who will lift up the banner of your righteousness of your grace of your power and of your wisdom to the nations lord we declare that tonight you will visit us in a way in the name of jesus let there be a reign of revelation, reign of insight. Challenge us, build us, equip us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Revelations 19, 18. Revelations 18, quickly. I hope you came with your Bible. Hallelujah. Many of you who don't come to church with your Bibles, please repent tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, Revelations 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, and be ye not partakers of her sin. That ye receive not her plagues. Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto the heavens. And God had remembered her iniquities. Lord we pray tonight. That you bless us. Let your word come alive. Let your word transform us in Jesus name. Amen. Quickly be seated. God bless you. Please pick up your Bibles. I'll be examining a very important topic. We're starting a new series. Hallelujah. It's our desire that as believers, we be grounded and established in truth. Paul prayed for the church and he said that they be built, they be grounded, and they be established in truth. This is what spiritual growth is all about. Spiritual growth is not just about praying in tongues or laying hands and getting people up. The Bible calls those things the basic things of the kingdom, the doctrines of the laying on of hands and all of these things. 
But there is a higher call. There is a higher realm. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we be built. We be rooted or grounded. Then be established in the truth. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4. That he gave unto some apostles and prophets and teachers, pastors, evangelists. For the edification, the perfection, the building up. Not for tradition and jamboree. For the building up of the saints. That they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. That we all as the body of Christ will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. Not being tossed through and fro, the Bible says, by every wind of doctrine. Hallelujah. And so it's not enough for us to see miracles and to see the manifestations of the Spirit. If you build your life and your faith upon just miracles and the manifestations of God, as good as that is, they are signs. Hallelujah. And our faith must be built on a sure foundation. The Bible says, He that hears my words and doeth them is compared to he that builds his house on a rock. Dig deep and builds his house on a rock. The Bible says the wind came and all kinds of things came. But he was unshakable. But the one that built his house on sand, and let me tell you something the body of Christ has many sons in which believers are building their faith upon and our goal is that every one of us comes to a point where we are established in Christ that we know him Paul said but I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able that's what it means to be a strong Christian to be a strong Christian does not just mean one who has the ability to pray four or five hours. Wonderful. It's not just one who has the ability to fast for 100 days. Wonderful. Not just one who has the ability to quote scriptures or be in ministry or walk in the miraculous. These things are good elements of spiritual growth. But there is a level of steadfastness, establishment, where you are grounded in the truth. Hallelujah where you know the lord the bible says let the rich man not glory in his riches let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength but let him that glory had glory in this that he knoweth and understandeth me this is the pride of the believer that you know the lord beyond religion beyond quoting scriptures hallelujah the church has been weak and beggarly primarily because the ministers have not been able to bring the church to a place of strength and maturity where every believer knows God and has a testimony and a track record of a personal work with God beyond the boundaries of ministry. Your knowledge of God should not be just the God of Joshua Selman or the God of Koinonia. There is a name that must come out of your experience with God. Hallelujah. The saints of old encountered God in practical ways and they named God after the residue of their experience with him. And while it is good to know him as the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, God of all the men of God in this country, it's time you develop an experience of being established in the person and the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Because when you know him, you will experience the fullness of him. And this has been my passion for years. To bring believers to a point where we know the Lord. Hallelujah. For they that know their God, Daniel eleven thirty two 32b, they shall be strong and they are the ones who will do exploits. Not the Christians. They that know their God. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego say, Oh king, we will not be careful to speak to you in this matter. He said, our God will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, I will not bow to you. That's a revelation of God. 
the reason why the spirituality of many people and of the church in nigeria is very slippery and very basic is because we have not contended for a greater knowledge of god the knowledge of his ways his principles his character and his person and this becomes our only hope for a victorious life hallelujah i hope you have a passion to know god to know him beyond the things that he can give you beyond marriage beyond money beyond friends beyond a good cgpa hallelujah the bible says in revelations 18 how that the kings of the earth had in, intermingled with babylon and there was a call in verse 5 4 he says and i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her that means god is calling a kind of people come out of her my people it says that be ye be not partakers of her sins hallelujah let me show you something very interesting tonight i want to challenge your second timothy second timothy chapter 3 paul is speaking here tonight i'm speaking on the apostate church the apostate church we're examining the concept of apostasy in the body of christ apostasy talks of a deviation from the truth it talks of the error of shifting and drifting away from the original principles of god and it will shock you as i reveal some things to you that happen in the body of christ it is so important bless god for being alive to listen to this message tonight hallelujah paul speaks about a generation and a time in a church age where there will be a reign there will be a prevalent manifestation of what he calls apostasy read on second timothy he was charging his son in the gospel timothy that he be established in truth and be a faithful bishop over the churches around verse one this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come this is a portrait of the apostate church for men shall be lovers of their own selves I want to paint the picture of the Nigerian church for you and help me confirm whether or not I'm lying. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, verse 3, without natural affection, gay marriage, all kinds of madness that goes on. Truth breakers, false accusers incontinent fierce despisers of those that are good traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasure lovers of pleasure more than lovers of god having a form of godliness going to church wearing nice suits having ushers and protocols standing having a form having bibles in their homes having ipads and ipods and all kinds of things browsing through scripture having a form of godliness say but denying its power from such turn away verse 6 for of this sort there are those who creep into houses house prophets marching from house to house Telling every house the problem they have in the world. And leading captive silly women laden with sins. Led away with various lusts. Ever learning. Bible studies on Sunday. Prayer meeting in the night. Self fellowship on Monday. Miracle service on Tuesday. Deliverance service on Wednesday. Word exposition and encounter on Thursday standing on the rock on friday sitting in heavenly places on saturday ever learning but never coming 
to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janice and Jambers withstood Moses, so this also resist the truth. Amazing that in the church of God, the truth is resisted. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further. This is the judgment of God upon these ones. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men, and theirs also was. He said, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. This is Paul speaking. My manner of life, my purpose, my faith, my long suffering, my charity, my patience. Hallelujah. 11. Persecutions, afflictions which came unto me in Antioch and all of that. Verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. And then 13. But evil men and seducers shall become worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Let's read that verse together. Verse 13. One to read. But evil men and seducers shall become what? Worse and worse, deceiving people and they themselves being deceived. But this is the encouragement to the true church. 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and thou hast been assured of, knowing whom thou hast learned them. 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 16. He said for all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable number one for doctrine number two for reproof number three for correction number four for instruction in righteousness that the man of God the next verse may be what perfect the word perfect there is mature thoroughly furnished the purpose of scripture and the dealings of God with the saints is that he brings us to a point where we are mature established grounded built up in the knowledge of God The apostate church is that church that subtly begins to deviate from the doctrines and the principles of Christ. The Bible says, ask for the ancient parts and walk ye therein. Unfortunately, what we call the ancient part is not what God calls the ancient part. Because what we call the ancient part is the traditions and religiosity of men and of denominations that also is an error and is part of the trait of the apostate church hallelujah are you listening to me tonight if you came here to be blessed if you came here to know the lord if you came here to shake out the things that caused the great to fall then welcome to this message tonight you must be able to open your spirit to receive. For in receiving the word, it will cause you to be established in truth. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of apostasy in our church. Every kind of activity. The Bible makes us to understand that the next series that we are stepping into, we will be examining the book of Revelations. Hallelujah. We are going to be opening up the book of revelations the word revelation comes from a latin word revelatio and the greek is apocalypsis that means the unveiling of that which has been previously hidden hallelujah it was a revelation of christ jesus as revealed to john a little bible history about john the bible makes us to understand that persecution arose when certain roman emperors began to strike against the church of christ and the first of them in bible history is called emperor nero he was a wicked and a hostile man hallelujah came to a point where they persecuted the church 
to a point that there was a field like a football field and they would parade believers and lose lions to chase them on account of their faith for the kingdom many were thrown into the den of lions many were dragged in carts hallelujah it was during that time that paul and peter paul was about to be crucified and Bible history tells us that Paul was about to be crucified the exact same way Jesus was crucified. And Paul said he was not worthy. He said they should turn him upside down. And they turned him upside down and crucified him. Hallelujah. And then after Emperor Nero, one called Domitio, the next emperor, he came in and paraded himself to be God and to be Lord. To a point that he even banished his wife and persecuted his children he wanted everybody to call him lord and god so when john the beloved the one who jesus loved when he began to preach about christ in the city of ephesus he began to talk about the counsel of god talk about the mysteries of the kingdom the divine life and the reality of the lordship of christ it was a real threat to the emperor hallelujah and then they caught john and paraded the people and they boiled hot oil and they threw john in it suddenly john entered the hot oil and nothing happened to him he moved freely through that hot oil and they were amazed what manner what dimension of the spirit what knowledge of god did this man have and as a result of that he was banished to the island that we call Patmos Revelations chapter 1 help us oh God to be the true church the revelation of Jesus Christ which he gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must surely come to pass and he had sent and signified it by his angel unto the servant John who bore witness of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and all things that he saw. And there is a blessing there for all those who read and obey the things that are written in Revelations. And John wrote to the seven churches. I'm driving somewhere. Hallelujah. Now you must understand that the way the book of Revelation was, was, um, was broken, it told him, write, the things that were, the things that are, and the things that shall happen after. Hallelujah. The things that were was a revelation of all the things that had happened before the church age. The things that are is a sum total of what we call the dispensation of the church age. Encapsulated prophetically in the seven letters that were written to the churches. There were truly seven churches in Asia Minor. All of the churches, Smyrna, Laodicea, and all of Pagamos, all of those churches, they were real churches that were planted by the apostles in Asia. But then prophetically, every one of those churches was a representation and a type, a dispensation of different ages in the church age. Are you following me now? And so he began to write to the churches. And you would hear the Lord commend the churches. I commend you over this and that and that. However, I have a problem. Hallelujah. God had a burden because the church of Christ, although they were walking in grace, although they were walking in power, certain men began to come in, orchestrated by Satan himself. And if they began to be injected into the system they talked like apostles moved like prophets prophesied like great men but paul said that these ones do not belong to us because their gospel and their message began to deviate the body of christ are you following me now this is one of the traits there are many doctrines hear me that many circles and ministries in this country are imbibing they teach it they write books about it these are erroneous doctrines 
that were sent from the pit of hell to deviate the focus of the church from the primary truth that it runs upon are you listening to me one of those doctrines was addressed to the first church in revelation chapter 2 and paul called it the doctrine of the laodiceans the laodiceans were a kind and a group of people that introduced a kind of doctrine another was called the doctrine of balaam different kinds of doctrines and let me tell you something the church of christ needs rapid emergency attention otherwise the way we are going to the church of christ has now become a psychological hospital where the power and the grace of god has been replaced by therapeutic psychological things so a brother can sleep with a lady and they say we need to examine the mental state and the kind of drugs and the the psychosomatic condition and all of the medical terms the apostate church we find justification for everything in the body one of the doctrines of the laodicean is where today we get the doctrine of what we know to be the doctrine of eternal salvation that once you are born again you can sleep in the name of jesus cheat in the name of jesus bribe in the name of jesus that whatever happens to your body does not affect your spirit your spirit is saved and many saints jump and we say hallelujah and many are queuing up and they will receive a rude shock when they find themselves in hell are you listening to me different kinds of gospels came one of it is called the doctrine of balaam there's no time but do you know balaam balaam was a prophet balaam was a true prophet balak called him and said he should curse the nation of israel and he repeatedly wanted to make attempts but the lord stopped him you know why because the nation of israel were sanctified and a holy people and the shout of the king was in the midst of them and he had a strategy in the book of numbers the bible begins to reveal to us some of the things that he did he caused the nation of israel to begin to fornicate and sleep with other people are you getting blessed tonight i came to challenge you tonight and then for the men of god in this country we have a special let me show you something jeremiah 23 i wish every pastor prophet bishop pope brother whatever that names the name of christ will sit and read this scripture are you ready let's read verse 1 then we'll jump to verse 9 jeremiah 23 verse 9 verse 1 and then we'll go to verse 9 are you there want to read woe be unto who stop who is speaking god is speaking through the prophet he said woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of the pasture woe unto the pastors that means there are pastors there are men and women of god they own parishes they own churches you watch them on tv it says they destroy and they scatter the sheep verse 9 my heart within me is broken because of the prophets now you must understand when the bible talks of prophets in ancient time there were no apostles are you listening to me why because christ has not been risen one of the biblical proof of an apostle is that he must encounter jesus christ face to face so the apostolic ministry was also incorporated and so the prophets function both in the apostolic and the prophetic office 
they were the only ones who God could use to communicate his counsel to the people the priests barely mediated between the God and the people in terms of sacrifice so when he talks about prophets there don't smile and say I was sleeping and I saw evangelists under my name you belong to that category and it's important to listen he said my heart within me is broken because of the prophets all my bones shake I am like a drunken man and like a man whom with wine had overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness this is the prophet speaking his reaction to the anger and the tenacity with which God was using to speak verse 10 for the land is full of adulterers for because of swearing the land mourned and pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their cause is evil and their force is not right it looks to me like Nigeria for both prophet and priest are what profane both prophet and priest are profane yea in my house have I found their wickedness therefore their ways shall be unto them like slippery parts in the darkness they shall be driven on and fall into them for I will bring evil upon them even the year of their judgment said the Lord 13 and I have seen falling the prophets of Samaria they prophesied in Baal look up they prophesy in the name of who so not everybody that looks at you and says you are pastor alpha and you say yes sir the bible says there are some prophets who prophesy and there are many of them in this country deceiving the sheep of god promising you all kinds of things i hope you are ready tonight I like the way God deals with you sometimes he doesn't tell you how he will come then you receive it down and it keeps you down let's hurry up I have also seen the prophets in Jerusalem so he was listing prophets everywhere the men of God in Zaria the ones in Abuja the ones in Port Harcourt, the ones in Wari then the legion of them in Lagos they are here the bible is talking about them he said an horrible thing they commit adultery and walk in lies they strengthen the hands of evil doers there is no place like the church of nigeria where we strengthen the hands of evil doers any tom dick and harry can go anywhere loot from the national treasury enter our place and buy a jeep for the pastor suddenly he becomes the holy spirit in the church directing the affairs of men the bible said they strengthen a man comes and meets a man of god and says ah uh, i'm about to embark on a trip or do something prophesy to me let me tell you something do you know because you have an unction from the lord you can speak over people and bless the works of their hands and it will prosper but the lord will hold you accountable because with that gift came discernment to glorify christ alone hallelujah it says that none doth return from his wickedness and they are all of them like sodom and its inhabitants like gomorrah therefore thus saith the lord of hosts concerning the prophets behold i will feed them with wormwood and make their drink the water of god for from the prophets of jerusalem is profaneness gone forth in the land 16. we we'll read to 19 and stop thus saith the lord of hosts hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you I hope you understand the context now it's talking about the false i like the way amplified puts it it says the false prophets he said don't mind the nonsense they are talking about doesn't matter how flamboyant it sounds he said they make you vain and they speak a vision in their own heart and not out of the mouth of god everybody stands on stage 
I was sleeping this morning and the Lord woke me up. And the Bible says they conceived that vision in their heart. Whose God is their belly? That vision was built from the hunger in their belly and not from the voice of God. Verse 17. They say still to those who despise me. In other words, it shall be well with you. People who are obviously perverting truth because they drop prophets offering. They buy you a suit. They take you to Hawaii and you say it shall be well. A man is stealing another man's wife. You know it. You are aware it shall be well. The apostate church. The Lord had said, you shall have peace. That's what they are saying. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of their heart, no evil shall come upon you. Is that not what a lot of people want? That's what we want. That's what we run to church for. Man of God, I came with a small offering. Then the man says, bless you. I see the Lord is showing me something. Oh, glory, glory, glory. And now you begin to jump. Let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. Because the Bible says, it didn't say they will diminish. They will keep increasing. And if the church of Christ is not built to be grounded, then there is trouble for us in Nigeria. 18. For who had stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived and heard his voice and had marked the word and heard it. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Verse 20. Let's read on. The anger of the Lord shall not return until I have executed, until he had performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. Verse 21. Everybody read it together. One, two, read. Yet they ran. I have not spoken to them. Yet they prophesy. Is that in your Bible? Or you removed it this morning? Is that I have not sent them? Joshua Selma Ministries International. I was sent by Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah, all kinds of things. They say, my God and my king. He spoke to me this morning. He said, build me a people. And they are destroying the people. He said, I have not sent them. Yet they did what? They are not even walking. Boy, there are ministries running in this country. One year they have established 30 branches. Everybody is running. The same deceit. The same perversion. And God's people get ensnared. Gullible because Satan knows how to lure you. He uses your lust and your needs to lure you into a trap. If Satan knows you don't like ladies, he will not bring a woman to you. What for? It doesn't work like that. He's smart enough to know that we respond to our needs. Hallelujah. The apostate church some of you belong to these churches some of you have enjoyed the things that they do they have taught us a lot of error they have deceived a lot of God's people right now everything in the church of the living God is money money can do everything the front row is determined by how many money makers or partners your seed is equivalent to your faith let me with time i'll be showing you where these doctrines came from because god has been speaking to many of you and there are many of you that are just waiting to finish abu so that you establish that kind of ministry you have planned it you have calculated it you have seen that it's 1.5 that will be your own every month you have you have drafted it and so you are crying they say fast and pray you will get power you are praying right now not because you love god it's part of the tools to add to the apostate church and i'm speaking to great men and women There's a lot of deviation from the truth of God's word. And many of us have seen it. We love it so much. We like a congregation that comes to massage 
our evil doings and the house of god has been turned into a place of entertainment nothing wrong with joy in his presence there is fullness of joy not fullness of foolishness and stupidity hallelujah now, all kinds of nonsense that happen in the church there are football fans that sit in church seats kept for them arsenal fans man you they give offering according to everything they shout hallelujah according to their what what is going on in the body of christ how come we don't have a voice that can rise to speak we laugh at these things and it's misleading us there are men and women in the body of christ whose job is to match make the pastor's wife it is the one she sees and she says sam you are the head of worship uh zuera you always smile every time sam raises a song you must marry him any other thing is not the counsel of god now let me tell you something as you are laughing make sure the holy spirit is sinking this thing into your spirit because it's happening hallelujah we have all kinds of people the church of god has become a dome for people to look for contracts every tom dick and harry comes and tells the pastor he wants to sit down near this manager that comes and they say turn to your neighbor and say what do you do and the man of god let me tell you something judgment will come upon the house of god oh i assure you it will happen as surely as the lord lives that's why the church in this country has no voice politicians know where to run to for security they loot from the national treasury and know who to run to a prostitute comes to meet you you are praying for her you are seen in the spirit she's a prostitute why don't you call her in love and let her give her life to christ that will cost you what she's about to give you the prophetic seed The Bible tells us that a day will come. Listen to me. I want you to know that a day will come. Jesus Christ is coming upon this earth. And I don't know who has deceived you. But I'm reversing that deceit tonight. There is something called judgment day. There are two kinds of judgment for your information. Let me balance the nonsense preachers have tried to preach. Number one. There is the judgment that he who has not given his life to Christ is already condemned. Those ones will not make heaven. But there is the judgment that will judge the works of men. Are you listening to me? So that one is among those who are already believers. The word judgment should not scare you. It's bringing into accountability. Matthew 25. Don't open it. There's no time. But I'm showing you that there is such a thing. And the Bible says to those found worthy in the age to come they will be made to rule over kingdoms hallelujah we have taught all men all kinds of things you are the god of yourself bring out the giant within you you are one with christ i like you to say i'm jesus everybody shouts i am jesus i like you to say i'm the galilean and they say i'm the galilean the doctrines that make the apostate church because this is exactly what satan did in ezekiel 28 he said i will exalt myself above the stars of god every time you sing a song and you say lord be magnified a lot of people say ah you're a new creation you should step into god push him he'll push you even when you do something that requires true remorse to have a contrite and a broken heart say there's no need feeling bad come on walk up to that touch your your redemption your redemption or whatever you touch and and smile back and so the leader of the choir is sleeping with every lady in the choir and touches his redemption back and smiles let me tell you something there is judgment that is coming upon the house of god yes there is and it's going to come and it will start with we the men of god and it will spread down do you realize 
that one of the talent that was collected was collected from one of the servants not an outcast many people's giftings ministries and many things will fade before you you will see it come in the days to come many prophets will arise as before suddenly they will see that the heavens have been closed for what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness and what communion has light got to do with darkness your writing exam 100 level malpractice took you to 200 level you said glory i'm the righteousness of god in christ jesus what is your concept of the sacrifice of jesus christ can i tell you something when a man of god stops preaching the things that he used to uphold he has started falling victim into that are you listening to me when a man of god cannot stand and preach holiness and righteousness the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he said he that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation we want things from god we want prosperity we want money and so we have been taught that a shortcut to it is to tap into the anointing of the man of god's life and so what happens we just sit down we don't do anything right now there are prophets in abuja that collect what we call battle seed you pay and they labor for you in the place of prayer while you go about becoming the apostate church so they pray you pay them on payrolls The man of God has prayer band praying for him and is there traveling around the world as if he's a tourist drinking juice changing every kind of thing trying all kinds of wine and then he comes his suit is fixed and he just flips through the scripture uh, let's look at Mark today he just shouts and for three hours of God's God giving time to his people stand there waste people's time you know how much I bought this suit? You people don't know. You are not yet in that level. And people laugh. Let me tell you something. It's time you begin to frown at some things. Are you listening to me? Because many of us, they have become mentors unto us. We love them. We admire them. Every time we see them, you imagine yourself marrying them. That imagination is certainly not from the cross of Christ. And there's need for radical reality. Many of us sit down and you already listen. They teach we young people all kinds of things. Get rich quick. Do everything. Breakthrough can come for you in one week. I see my car. Look, I know what faith is. I'm not telling you that there is no place for faith. I teach about faith here, don't I? But I'm telling you there is a straight line between faith and foolishness. Are you listening to me? God sends the man to carry his tithe and go and sow. And he uses from the tithe. And the remaining 20%, he comes and explains everything to you. He says, God is a merciful God. Just take this one and just use it and use malt. And with this effort you are doing, just use malt and wash your mouth. I say, ah, ah, my son, my son. You laugh over it right now the poor in church don't have a voice they are the ones who don't have faith they are the ones who sit outside who is your father who is your mother they are posted church we are laughing about it many of us are enjoying it many times they begin to teach us demonic things what they are teaching many people is what the bible calls new age new age new age they teach you all kinds of principles all in the name of the prophetic and many people truly begin to enter into the realm of the spirit and walk into all kinds of demonic things schools of prophecy where they gather people and pray and say now Aaron what did you see you must tell us what you saw and then everybody truly begins to see every kind of thing 
and we use those things and pervert the body and you look at somebody who is not called into the fivefold ministry and say steve i see prophet in your name from today henceforth move in that in your might and steve is struggling because the grace is not there and then you tell him to amplify his prophetic by bringing a seed for you now he brought the seed how many of you have given seeds to fake people and you did not get the result everybody that blessed a true prophet of god in scripture received a prophet's reward many of our parents work hard only to come and vomit all the money in the presence of gullible and wicked prophets by the end of the month they are in your house they came for a prophetic instruction they gather everybody out how come people cannot think in the church a man of god looks at a lady and says strip naked quickly quickly is a prophetic instruction and you see her hurrying up nonsense the bible lets us know that there is a more sure word of prophecy are you listening to me a more sure word it will not contradict the spirit of christ for the testimony the testimony of jesus is the true spirit the motivation behind every prophetic word many believers right now do not have time for them and god you know why we are busy busy trying to look for money busy trying to look for husband and wife busy trying to look for jobs busy trying to do everything the bible says seek ye the kingdom and his righteousness those values are no longer preached and we men of god celebrate it when people join queues and they are waiting for the anointing and you see people as if jesus didn't die for them too for hours they are helpless waiting for the stepping in of the man of faith and power joshua selman i'm not saying don't respect men of god but why have you made them gods to your life hallelujah a man marries his wife the man of god will not let them flog out their issues and enjoy issues everything that happens she will come to tell the man the day she's pregnant the man will know before her husband lest the husband go and eat the baby where are we going the apostate church intelligent men and women become brainwashed in the church and we begin to do all kinds of things the lord must arise and help us are you listening to me the people have come to a point where we love it so we are not ready for growth and any minister of the gospel that stands for this truth unconsciously the seed has been planted and we begin to hate those people i believe in new creation realities i have been blessed i believe it till death i believe in the operation of faith we talk to people and tell them nobody should die when somebody dies the church does not take responsibility they say go and bury the person it's a shame to our church we are the ones who live forever and they leave the person sad helpless going and he goes to meet his orthodox church that we always laugh at and then they are the one who conduct the funeral and laugh but let that person's business blossom and you will see claiming of members sheep stealing in the name of church planting everybody everybody becomes a son how come blind people are not spiritual sons to men of god but they are in our churches how come the ladies who are not fine are not submitting to the people everybody looks for the best the choicest and we yoke people with all kinds of demonic doctrines tonight there are two categories of people in this place those who will say and say this nudging in my spirit it has been there is a cry of the spirit and those who will just laugh you want true prosperity you want true power there are many young people in this country that we have been taught that a process is as a result of lack of faith so we teach people 
that now faith is if your faith is working the jeep should come now and somebody in 200 level is converting jeeps angry he will not sit down and read his book just shouting because we have misled them and a young man who has 50,000 that's all the money his poor parents gave him he comes to school and we put them under pressure because he's the head of department you must buy this suit with 45,000 to match our status may God have mercy on his church some of you have been victims of what I'm saying to a point that you are now enjoying it. the man of God may not be fake but it does not justify the principles he's using hallelujah and the Lord brings us to help us know him righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne many people right now every time you talk about Bible study a time of building in the word people begin to frown But once you talk of breakthrough night a night of receiving and taking take yours people say yes this is the kind of thing i like encounter with the spirit of elijah then they'll put semicolon speed yes we like it everything that bypasses the process of greatness and can i tell you something many of our parents look at us although they are not filled with the holy ghost but heed some of the warnings they are giving they may say young man i may not know god oh but i know this is not how he works emmanuel all the world is calling your name emmanuel when you come again Emmanuel and the church will see your holy face Emmanuel when you come to reign we do not have people who can stand for Christ and stand for truth they say if you cannot beat them do what many of you are hoping to finish school now and run to abuja your blood is already hot for an year project hi god let me finish this thing see i will shake the country so every time they are saying you are blessed in your mind what you are thinking is let me go and invade everything can someone walk up to you and drop five million naira over the integrity of your faith can you look at it without praying about it and say no i love god more than this don't be too quick to smile and nod your head because many generals who have fallen gullible were disconfident are you listening to me where a man who steal another woman's wife and come to meet you and say pastor bless us uh, as a token of my appreciation i have one small one you are not doing introduction you are a man of god and so you tell them i love you but this is the position of the word of god and i will not compromise it may cost you your fame it may cost you your reputation you may not belong momentarily notice what i'm saying there are many of you right now on account of your faith people have called you stupid because you are doing the things that god wants you to do that guy wanted to go out with you and he was so rich but you went to the lord and god said no way and your friends insulted you they say you you are the most stupid lady we know in this day and age can't you collect his money and go what is there about him sleeping with you 
but then you stand for truth can i tell you something there is a name that god is called he's called the lord of sabaoth and he's about to step in and prove those who truly love him can i tell you what the lord showed me one time i shared it that the works of men were like heaps hallelujah somebody told me about it and then i forgot about it one day when the lord showed me surprised me many men came to stand and their works just like wheat in the harvest and fire just passed it and then you just see something little left that's the real thing that they are doing for the kingdom can i tell you something you can live and be a billionaire in this life you can live and be an influential person you can have a church membership of two billion people but it is only the degree to which you walk consistently with god that will make sense in the realm of the spirit are you listening to me so many of you who have been taught that god's way is just to make you a millionaire overnight calm down there is something called a process sow your seeds today build your life today many who cannot stay with the holy spirit you can't study for five minutes because you have been taught that you need to hurry up there is no hurry in this life you know why i'm saying that because those that have been moving according to god's pattern will turn and find out that they are ahead of those who have been deceiving them there are many churches and ministries you are seeing today the day their harvest begins to come it will shock you because they are laboring bearing root downwards there are many men of god you hear today i remember years ago years ago abu has changed years ago you see a man of god small grace you touch one sister and she falls you see one pa one pa one this one that i remember those times i used to be quiet and i'll lock myself somewhere i was walking in the anointing walking in grace encounters with jesus but i knew the bible says john remained in the wilderness until the time of his appearing many people came with visions and prophecies josh we saw you in a tv station pfn remember pfn said they wanted to give us room to start eni in one of their branches all those things look like expansion in ministry but i knew that was not the season of appearing are you listening to me many of us have short-circuited our dealings and our trainings with the lord because we have been taught a false doctrine a false gospel when god is dealing with you and he has not finished you jump classes in the spirit now you come and establish a big ministry and those lessons you would have learned from the classes you jumped will bring you back and retrogress you in ministry even at the height of it every young man who can wear suit they just call him and say kneel down pour oil on him and say stand up i saw the gift of the spirit on you you are a, you are a pastor you are an apostle and now this guy just got born again six months ago and they say forget the harvest is why the babylon in him has not finished dying now he stands on stage and he sees lara very pretty lady and the old man cain is attempting to resurrect when abel is preaching and that guy is struggling on stage he's laughing then he says come into my office and tomorrow you hear that something happens and people will say how far moses stayed 40 years in the wilderness let me tell you something friends we must return to the order and the patterns of the spirit if we want to last and be great a lot of people do not go through the dealings of god suddenly one breakthrough comes they step into prosperity and they become fools the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them 
because they do not know the purpose of the blessings they were not taught are you listening to me tonight god is searching our hearts because he wants us not to be the apostate church there is a church like that in nigeria i don't mean a denomination i mean a group of people parading all kinds of beliefs the church is becoming a psychological thing right now you go to churches and you see the the drawing of anatomy and they're explaining every kind of thing your subconscious mind your inner conscious mind the other one that is there where you are hot information goes through this place what is your university for And then the man laughs and says, Ah, so this is the side of me that makes me like women. So it's not even bad. Hallelujah. And we try to teach people principles of metaphysics and Christian science, mind reading. A prophet just comes and says, Come, Josiah. And Josiah comes. He said, now everybody watch. Wave his hand and Josiah goes blind. And people say, wow. That is certainly not the spirit of Christ. Because among all the things that God gave man dominion over, man was not mentioned. Are you listening to me? So that we tread the path of destiny with care knowing the word of god herbalists have found out that they are running out of markets and they now have left their their herbal joints and one suit and say if you will not come to us we are coming there is a mountain in abuja i think manasseh will tell you when you go there they give you stones and you throw if by any means your stone does not hit the tree that you are trying to throw, you will know what brought you there. So you want to marry or you want this. They bring it. And, and you throw. And if he hits it, you will rejoice. A man of God says in the name of prophetic instruction, bring the photo of the lady or the guy you want to marry or the kind of job you want. They say bring it. Now there is a place for that. But this is where the boundary crosses. They say now, put your seed upon it and bring it. Put candle on top. Go around it seven times. Do all of this. Is that not what native doctors are doing? I don't care who is doing it. There is a name. It's called witchcraft and manipulation. That's exactly what is going on. And many men of God are already building cabals. There is the cabal of the prosperous ones. There is the cabal of the handsome young men of God. There is their group. They are the ones who can shake ladies. When it's time to pray in tongues, they come and stand and do all kinds of nonsense. Tonight's message is ringing a bell in your spirit. We are going to pray. We have to be out of here. So, the apostate church. And there is a warning it says that if you do not stay and you take on these doctrines many churches have now become business centers different kinds of anointing oils different kinds of breakthrough handkerchiefs different kind of prophet's mantle they line them before you while service is going on and they tell everybody just come according to your needs but I know in my Bible that there was a time that a particular sorcerer, a man wanted to buy power from Peter. And he said, thy money perish. With you. I'm not saying don't buy tapes. Don't buy anointing oil. But if your purpose, I went somewhere and the man was marketing books. And he says that if you don't buy this book, something will happen to the people after three days. And you need to see the believers, intelligent people, some doctors, everybody rushing. Why can't you just say, this is my work. I have labored. And you can honor me and honor what God is doing. Is that not honest enough? What is wrong with saying, koinonia, um, 
if you consider me to be a servant of God, bless me. You come and stand and twist truth. The Bible says, handling the word of truth rightly. Men of God have gone to the extent of receiving all kinds of powers. There was a case in Kaduna. I'm sure some of you heard about it. The man of God that had a special anointing oil that he will rub on himself as he's stepping into the church. Come and see power, everybody falling. Because the Greeks seek for a sign. Hallelujah. And one day, he forgot to put the oil. And then when he came, he told his assistant to quickly run and check somewhere up and bring the oil. And it so happened because of morning service. The assistant pastor didn't take his bath. He would bath later on. And his body was white. He said, Kai, let me just quickly, this kind of embarrassment. And the guy just rubbed the oil. Small. As soon as the assistant entered, the power of God began to break out. And the Jew said, you touch that oil. Abby. Not fiction. Not fiction. To the point that the church of Christ cannot even know the difference between a true man of God and a false man of God. A right spirit and a wrong spirit. Anything God cannot give me, I cannot get from anybody. Anywhere He cannot take me, I cannot go. You must come to a point. The, the higher you go in the spirit, the more dependent you are on Him and His word. He said, I love your word more than my necessary food. We must train a word carrying church. Hallelujah. Job said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change comes. For your honesty in your job place, you have not been promoted. Wait. There will be the time of appearing. Let me tell you, when God promotes you, no man can demote you. When a man promotes you, you will need him to keep taking you higher. But when the king of glory, the one who watches over his word to perform it, lifts you, you are lifted forever. There is a relationship between praying in tongues, staying seriously with God's word, diligence, a life of purity and holiness, and the anointing of the spirit. When you see a man moving in the anointing and you do not see these traits, something is wrong. There is no guesswork about the anointing. There is no guesswork about the word of God. Are you getting blessed tonight? The apostate church. Tonight, many of us need to deliver ourselves from religiosity and traditions of men that stop us from stepping in. When we begin to examine the book of Revelation, we'll talk about the seven churches. And we'll examine everything that the Lord forbade in their lives. But tonight, my call is that judgment is coming upon the body. There is judgment that will come upon the body. And many churches will be affected. Many bishops will be affected. Many men of God will be affected. Many apostles, many prophets will be affected. Not because God is a wicked God. Because the people of God have been perverted from the ways of God. It's time for everyone to get up. And know God for real. Know his ways. Let the word of God not just become an instrument of devotion for you in the morning. They are life to those who find them. It must become your life. That you say, if I perish, I perish. Faith in the operation of God's word. If God has said you are blessed, you are blessed. If God has said you are lifted, you are lifted. It doesn't matter what ABU tells you. It doesn't matter what your parents tell you. His anointing is upon your life. You may not look like it, but the word of God tells you. You stop running from pillar to post, looking for endorsements. The word has endorsed you. It has called you the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. We need a generation of men and women who when they come to bribe you, you will say no. No bribery. No corruption. Where if God takes you to a place of government, you will stand for truth 
you will stand for justice you will stand for equity at every cost job said though he slay me yet will i praise him no bribery that you are seen you are in the exam hall no malpractice you know that you can copy and get an a and it will shift you from two two to two one and you say no i love the lord not it does not matter my spirit is seated with christ my body is seated in hell hallelujah where you believe the lord where you stand for what is true the values of the kingdom the church has become a secular place any Tom, Dick and Harry that produces any album just jumps on your stage and because we are looking for fame we don't know the difference between Zion and Babylon again the sacredness and the purity of the word of God and the songs of the spirit and by the way let me correct what you are saying Many of you say, eh, he's talking about rappers. I love rappers. There are born again, spirit filled people. So let your religion not even think is what I'm talking about. I'm not just talking of those singing him. I'm talking of those who are truly born again. Filled with the Holy Spirit. That Christ has become the center of their lives. That whether through raps, through music, whatever... They know that they are not just musicians and guest artists using the church as a ladder to climb to greatness but that they love God for real. That when they come out to minister I was listening to an interview by Frank Edwards. I love him so much. They say, how do you write your songs? He said, I don't write my songs. I spend time in the spirit and I receive them. Right now everybody wants to get money. You just sit down and conjure one album. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You're my Lord, you're my Lord. Jesus, Jesus. And no life, death, standing and shaking itself in the church. And people are just nodding. They are just enjoying it. No life. No life. The person finishes his song and runs outside and is laughing. He said, man, you should give me my honorarium. Let me leave. I have another meeting somewhere. And he said, you must give me my money in this place. We will drag this thing. Many of you are seated here. You are musicians. You are music ministers. The reason why God has not lifted you is because you have not listened to this message. Until he flogs out flesh and Babylon in you. Then the glory will begin to come by itself. We want a set. See, let me tell you why I shout and I say these things. Because now I have access to you. Tomorrow I may not have access to you. You will be too busy. So I kill it and bring it as hot as it is. So that you can listen. It can sink into your spirit. You may not like me. But tomorrow you will bless me. You will put my children in your school because you are happy. Your responsibility will make you a blessed man. There is nobody who laughs during training. It's only in the church people laugh during training. They are happy. They say you are lifting weight. You want to compete with the whole world. You are smiling. No. Go and watch the Olympic people. For the place of training is a place of sacrifice. Sister, I know you are pretty. But permit me to flog out Babylon. Flog it out. So that your beauty can be as gold. My brother, I know you are nice. Let me flog it out. By the time I do that, let me tell you something. You will stand strong. God can make you the entrepreneur. You will be the next or Ted or last and the rest. But then, you will be a strong person. This time around, you will be able to stand and tell the world, and say I love Jesus Christ 
next time some of you will be the bishops and you will remember you will not be some of the bishops we have in this country with all due respect you will know the difference between God and man if this is my only assignment on earth I am happy and I will do it honorably necessity is laid on me and the word burns in my spirit like fire and I must bring it out as it is come out from among them and be ye separate come out the language tonight is come out from among them be ye separate don't adopt those philosophies I'm not teaching you to be critical that every time you go to a church you are just trying to watch the mistakes of the man of God no 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 God does not use perfect people his glory unwraps them and then brings them to a place of grace where they are dependent on his grace however there are some things that are not mistakes it's called apostasy the perversion of truth be careful the kind of men and women of God you are allowed to climb your stage men of God be careful the kinds of meetings you allow now are not this see I don't go for any kind of ministration call it pride call it whatever people just come and meet you and through a phone they say there's a meeting several men of God are coming want you to come and honor them the next thing you see your face in the middle of witches and wizards they use your presence to endorse evil so when people see you they say ah if Joshua Selman can be here that means these people are nice then after the meeting the people say ah I'm that Joshua Selman's friend come and meet me at home and they say yes sir the same respect that's what has been happening in a lot of churches a lot of things because of honorarium everything you just go because we are afraid of our reputation you don't scrutinize and question and make sure that everything is lined up in obedience to Christ hallelujah thank you Jesus this teaching will make you strong this teaching will make you great I tell you the truth it may not mean anything to you right now but I assure you in the days to come it will separate you it will bring you grace listen to what I am telling you it will bless you I will not teach you what will destroy you this may be a hard teaching but can I tell you something hear the voice of the Lord tonight one day you will know that a preacher was shouting truth into your spirit your spirit bears witness as painful as it is your spirit tells you I'm not lying to you I will tell you what many men of God will not tell you that's why we respect God in this place we know the boundaries of offerings we know the boundaries of character we know the boundaries of everything is supposed to model to you something we may not be the best of people but we are certainly not the worst and I hope that you see a desire to love God can your life be true can you be a replica of the true Jesus life can the anointing come upon you and the glory of God will still beautify you can God make you a millionaire and a billionaire and his kingdom will still be advanced can God make you an influential person in the government can God give you the anointing the power you want the fame the influence the charisma can God take you to the nations and still find your heart oh Lord I want to know your glory I want to offer a sacrifice of praise fill this temple Lord, with your spirit once again oh Lord we want to know your glory
We want to be the true church. We want to offer the sacrifice. Would you fill this temple, Lord? Fill this vessel, Lord, with your spirit once again. These are the kind of people that will step into prosperity. These are the kind of people who will step into charisma. The Lord told me something. I've said it here. That son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That's what the Lord told me. He said, if you let men see me. He said, if I be lifted up, not Joshua Selman, not Koinonia, don't make Koinonia an idol. Don't make ENI an idol. Don't make Joshua Selman an idol. Or any of the ministers who are only ushers. Pointing you to the king of kings. Like John the Baptist, we are the voice of that word that cries. We are preparing and making straight his way. If you come for Koinonia and all you end up doing is respecting Joshua Selman alone and loving him above God we have succeeded in manipulating you into witchcraft and idolatry and god will judge us for it we must lead you to the king of kings the one who is above all that all of us will stand before him it's our job to ensure that you are successful in this life that's why we teach you on wealth we teach you on prosperity we teach you on faith we teach you on the principles of success is our goal that you become men and women of character that's why we teach you on the fruit of the spirit we teach you on the anointing we want you to move and operate in the miraculous and the supernatural that you be thoroughly grounded and established in truth do not be unaware of the devil's devices we are going to pray and cry our heart to the lord and say lord deliver the church in nigeria and set us apart you're going to pray for your pastor you're going to pray for your man of God, your bishops. We are going to raise a cry. You will pray for we, the leaders, and say, Lord, keep them. Keep them. That 10 years from now, we will still be preaching this truth that we are preaching. And not allow jeeps and trips abroad. And millions and billions. Rise up on your feet, we are praying. Inside and outside, begin to pray. Pray and say, Lord, I come out from among them. I come out from among them in business, in ministry, pray, in governance. I come out from among them. I refuse to be part of the Babylon generation. I refuse to be part of the apostate church. That church that perverts truth, whose God is their belly. I'm driven by your passion alone. I'm driven by your passion. My heart pants for you in a dry and weary land. I love you more than ministry. I love you more than life itself. Pray. Say, Lord, I love you more than success, more than titles, more than CGPA, more than anointing, more than marriage, more than relationship. Lord, you have won my heart. There's no going back. In life and in death, you have won my heart. Go ahead and pray. Those of you in ministry, pray. I refuse to teach lies. I refuse to deceive God's people. I spend time with the word. I spend time in prayer. I get the Rema word of God. Shabba Baba Kapas. Eko Soto 
I stand for truth. I stand for righteousness. I stand for grace. That the anointing of the Spirit, that the prosperity of heaven, that the blessings of God will find expression. Pray. We are praying tonight. We come out from among them. We will not bow to bear. We will not mix fresh and salt water. We receive grace. 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 To be generous indeed. Grace. To be generous indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray for yourself. And say, Lord, I dedicate my giftings, my skill, my ability to serve only you. Whether you are a musician, whether you are a celebrity, you are a five-pointer. Open your mouth. Say it. Don't look at me. Pray. Say, Lord, from today, I will never use my giftings, my anointing, my ability to serve Satan, no matter what it will cost me, no matter what it will cost me, in business, in ministry, in your family life, pray, I live for Jesus, I serve him alone, I serve him alone, no compromise. Everything that is not of God, Lord, take it away from me. Whatever, any fame, any prosperity, anything that is not of God, any association, take it away. Let only Christ be glorified. Any marriage, any relationship, any friends, associations, groups, sects. I love you more than silver or gold. I mean it. I mean it when I love you. Hallelujah. God is raising the end time army of real Christians. And that's our job. Finally, we are going to pray for the church in Nigeria. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your man of God. Pray for me. Pray for all the leaders. Say, Lord, keep them. Those who are already in apostasy, don't condemn them. But say, Lord, deliver them. Let light shine out of darkness. Come on, pray. Lord, we pray for your servants. Let light shine out of darkness. Every man of God, every church water, Lord, we pray in Zaria, in Kaduna, in the north, in Nigeria, Lord, we pray, redeem their soul from the deceit of Babylon, redeem their soul in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. We pray for every church in Zaria, Lord, that they will stand for truth. We pray for the men of God, money not take the attention from you. Fame, power, charisma will not take your Shadabaka brother Lord step in in your mercy. Step in in your mercy. 
and redeem the ministers, redeem our businessmen, redeem those in authority, redeem our bishops, our apostles, our pastors, our leaders, that Christ the Lord will be Lord, that we will love you above and beyond the things that you give us. Listen to me. I was coming in from Abuja this evening. And while I was coming, I was just talking with the driver. Only two of us. And something happened. A car just came. Nothing was wrong. Brake did not fail. Nothing happened. This car just came to hit us. And then it moved in front of us and rode right into a ditch. I watched it. It moved right into a ditch. I just stretched my hands and I said, Lord, mercy. Mercy. That was all I was saying. How that it happened, nobody died in that car. Not even a scratch. But I looked and the driver told me. He said, I've never seen a very strange guy like that. And he was speaking to me, a different person. I took him from Abuja. And he was telling me, he said, shortly before this car came, suddenly he had a vision. Just in a split second, like an accident. And then I told him, I said, there are some people that are too jealous in the hands of God. God would rather a nation die for their sake. This is the true basis of immunity in the kingdom not this i shall not die thing no there is how you can be so useful to god that god will swear by himself to defend you hallelujah and while i prayed this morning the lord gave me a prophetic word to announce to the house i never speak a thing until god tells me the lord told me something he said son for half of this year you have seen great grace he said tell the people to brace up for glory tell the people to brace up for glory you will see things that will happen in the next few weeks that will shock you will cause your ears to tingle if i be a servant of god and if i be called by god i prophesy this into your life and i declare that you will see it happen in your life you will see it happen in your family you will see it happen in your ministry the lord told me to declare that is a season beginning from this eight month an unprecedented level of glory of increase you will see prosperity like never before you will see expansion as a ministry as individuals in your businesses in your life in your academics i tell you the truth and i lie not the Lord God of Israel will confirm this in your life. It's a season of glory. That's what God told us at the beginning of this year. He said, great grace. I'm not the kind of preacher that just sits down and laughs on the 31st and guesses what God is saying. No. It's in the bowels of much prayer and staying with the Spirit. If God does not tell me anything, I have no business announcing things but let me tell you something you will see glory that will shock you I say this, write it, mark it if it does not happen I am not called of God the Lord spoke to me this morning he said you have endured the season of great grace tell the people to brace up for glory brace up for glory you have trusted God you have enlarged your capacity. We pray 21 days. Praying and fasting. You have heard the word. I tell you prepare. Write it. Write it. You will see it with your eyes. 
shocking things will happen in this koinonia levels of grace you will hear men talk about it outside some will criticize it and say it's not of god some will say this kind of prosperity this increase cannot be from god but let it be that god declared it before the time lord we give you praise tonight we thank you for your grace we choose to be the true church deliver us all oh god from any form of apostasy let us be the true church oh i declare glory i hear it again in my spirit tell them it's a season of glory increase prosperity blessings restoration enlargement that's what the lord tells me to declare and i declare it as he speaks it into my spirit Lord, you will hasten your word to perform it. And our eyes shall see and we will give you thanks. God can be willing, but we can be careless and hope, well, if, if it happens, that's all right. Let me just watch if my situation changes, no problem. If the new anointing comes to my life, no problem. If God opens up a new door, no problem. If the employment comes, no problem. But tonight is for people who insist and say there's no plan B. God, I've come tonight. There is no plan B. I'm not hoping for a job next month. I've had other testimonies. I don't know who you must talk to. But thank God the man of God said there are angels. They must walk this night too. This is, this is the kind of audacity. This is the kind of insistence. Oh God, we are 11 in our family. Nobody's rising. Are we cursed? We love you. We serve you. No job. No children. No marriage. No peace. Come on now. You need to get angry. There is an agitation that provokes the anointing. Are we together? Lord, I didn't live a wayward life. Now there is a terminal disease that is about to destroy me. I don't know where it came from. I just found out that they said I have HIV or cancer. Insist that I must leave you this night. Don't sit down and be hoping and saying, well, uh, if it doesn't, no nobody who has an option receives a miracle you don't receive miracles with options it is if i perish i perish let it not be that you wasted your transport to come and you are saying okay lord let's watch what happens no sir. lord i've heard that you can change the stories of men i've watched you do it hallelujah There is a connection. You see, what causes things to happen in the kingdom is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The power of God is the mysterious agency behind results. Whenever results happen in the physical, the agency, the force that makes results to happen is the power of God. It's not just prayer. Listen carefully. It's not just the words words are vehicles in those words are the force and the power the life-giving power of god but listen carefully there is a relationship that many believers do not understand between faith and the anointing many people have written books about faith and the anointing and the teaching that most people have received in the body of christ is that you can choose faith or you can choose the anointing there are two routes to choose from is a lie there's nowhere in the bible where that is taught i've read my bible very well this is an office that god has given me i can tell you about the anointing there is no place in the bible where you can choose either between faith and the anointing no sir they will always work faith in itself does not produce result faith connects you to the flow of the anointing it is the anointing, the power of God that produces result. Why is faith important? Because that is the only way God designed for men to touch the anointing. The possibilities of God are only authorized to be manifested when there is faith. What is faith? Conviction. Conviction. And the action 
that is taken on the strength of that conviction very simple faith is conviction the most important aspect of faith is conviction accumulating scriptures is not conviction that you are familiar with scriptures does not mean conviction conviction is of the heart it is a dimension of the operation of the holy spirit where faith is grounded in the spirit of a man is called conviction are we together listen to me the reason why many believers do not see the outstretched arm of god is because there is truly no faith if the problem is not anointing it is faith because many believers are not bible believing believers many believers do not study the word of god you see the system of the miraculous is such that you must understand that god is not a herbalist the basis of the introduction of his power to your life is access to his will access to his will that's the starting point of faith it matters to god that you are convinced not only that he wants to touch you or that he is able to touch you but that he is willing to touch you the bible is full of god's willingness but until you find out you are not going to believe nothing you believe a report you believe an information you believe a truth someone must propose something to you he said whose report will you believe the starting point is your access to a truth not just a random access to scripture oh by his stripes i'm healed oh i'm the head and not the tail oh i'm the righteousness of god that's just stories brothers and sisters that's not conviction an accumulation of scriptures is not conviction conviction is a product of meditation that you take the word of god and say lord there has to be a way out now let me tell you while you are meditating your situation has not yet changed it is the meditation that will change it you will not meditate when it changes that you sit down and you open your bible and you say we are 12 in our family and every door has closed door of favor closed door of everything and you find a scripture and you stay with the holy ghost while you are studying that scripture you are clueless on what to do don't worry faith is rising in your spirit and all of a sudden the word of god is energized in your spirit the holy ghost opening you up he brings you to a point where you are convinced such that even if you don't receive the result yourself you can no longer say it's a lie you will just admit that this thing has not worked for me but to disbelieve that this is God's will is impossible that's conviction you get to a point where the truth the, your certainty about that truth is no longer about your result again that you look at it and say male and female he created them if I never give birth to a child from my womb I will never disbelieve the fact that God gives children that's conviction where you are not your situation is too small to make you change this is who god is this is what he has said conviction most times we come to god we think we have faith but the truth of the matter is that we just come and hope okay lord i just hope let the man of god prophesy to me I, I hope will he lay hands on me will I be healed I don't know what to happen but Lord I hope no no the Bible is full of God's manifesto so that you will believe him brothers and sisters if you were God will you gather a whole family like this and then tell them I'm joking there's something people do a pray fool you know it you know how angry you are when they do a pray fool for you because of the seriousness that is committed in the information and then the person tells you i was joking no sir no sir no sir god cannot call a solemn assembly like this to come and waste your time and then to say that he's going to give you a job now let me tell you there is every possibility you will go back and that job will not happen and it's not god's fault god is saying 
if my power does not come your direction something is stopping it faith faith blind Bartimaeus would not shout if he did not believe Jesus would heal him he heard that this man could heal and although he was blind he said thou son of David he never called him Jesus that's a revelation that's a revelation all those who knew Jesus never called him Jesus they called him by certain names thou art Christ the son of the living God son of David have mercy upon me are we together now so once you are here seated you didn't come for church you are the one who knows the fire you left to come here let me tell you how to respond and receive number one you have to be convinced that God is able and willing to step in step in now you may say man of God you don't know how many men of God have prayed for me let me teach you something about miracles there is there is a dimension of the grace of God you only experience when you find a man that is sent to you listen very carefully there were many widows in Zarephath and I'm sure those widows called on the God they knew but to none was Elijah sent the Bible never said the widows were not taken care of Elijah was not the only prophet so other systems were designed by God but as far as the widow of Zarephath is concerned one of the greatest testimony that can happen to a man is to discern the anointing that can solve your problem that a man is anointed does not mean he solves every problem no sir no sir there were people Jesus was on earth he did not touch them it was when the apostles received the Holy Ghost they came back and met those people and the, the apostles touched them Paul who was Saul was on earth but the earthly ministry of Jesus did not affect him it was till Jesus went to heaven and then he had several encounters and came so that a man is anointed it will be arrogant to just guarantee and imagine that everybody will be touched by your anointing it's not true these are very deep spiritual mysteries Jesus said John 17 listen to what he said he said all that you have given me that means there were some that were not given they were given to his salvation but not his earthly ministry they were given to be benefactors of his salvation as the lamb of God but they were not given to be partakers of his earthly ministry all that you have given me listen he was giving God a report he says all that you have given me I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition and it's not because I was careless he was lost so that scriptures might be fulfilled people of God I want you to believe God and trust God tonight if you carry your problem and come and carry your anger and annoyance anger does not give miracles oh my stupid husband my stupid wife no you're going to come with your heart open and say Lord I know I know it is within your power and you 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 are receptive receptive to prophecies receptive to instructions receptive to the move of God that when his power comes close to you you know that Lord this is it I've gotten my miracle testifying is not magic you program your spirit to be a benefactor the anointing of the spirit can come and pass a place and you can stand as though it never located you is that true but there is a way you can position your spirit it's called faith first your conviction a, a sense of certainty that God will touch me the program was tailor-made I was talking with the protocol while we we're coming and I was telling him that from start to finish of our programs especially the miracle service everything is designed to make sure that your miracle does not escape you from the opening prayer to everything to the nature of the prayers the miracles then prayer requests then everything and then still after the service i stand to see people is is a design to make sure that everybody receives don't let the devil mock god in your life you are going to insist 
and say Lord I believe you Lord I believe you now let me tell you something with Satan because Satan knows that we walk in the realm of the flesh he knows that the way he destroys your faith is to supply informations around your life that are very obvious is that true right now you are sitting down then he uses the pain and he says tell me man or woman of faith is it no pain you are feeling now and then you are tempted to say but it's true tell me man or woman of god is it not your rent issue you left at home is the landlord not waiting for you at home when you hear that kind of thing it just agitates you but people of faith say uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. i choose to believe it is in the believing the miracle will come i'm not ready to be distracted now it is in the believing that the miracle will come every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome. every high thing must every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear Tonight in this place, there are people who are afflicted by all kinds of diseases. Some of you have had medical reports. Some of you have spent money in the hospital and it has become clear. Some of you were even recommended by doctors. We thank God for the caliber of doctors we're having now. They are spiritual people. Once they try once, twice, it's them who will advise you and say, we will not stop you. But Mr. Man, find a man of God quick. Are we together now? There are people here sick with all kinds of oppression. Benihim calls sickness death, limited death. He calls sickness limited death. That means if you are sick, it's like a part of you has already died. And it's true. There are people here with all kinds of delays in need of major breakthroughs. Not everyone here is sick. But there are people in need of all kinds of breakthroughs. There are people here. And many people do not know. That the causes of their challenges. Are oppressions. Demonic oppressions. Demonic oppressions. Activities of spiritual forces. In the lives of people. Programming repeated cycles of tragedy. Programming repeated repeated cycles of tragedy there are people tonight in need of supernatural solutions solutions that only God can give job issues promotion issues health issues all kinds of issues it's not called a healing service it's called a miracle service a miracle service is an atmosphere where the multifaceted possibilities of God are allowed unrestrained. It's like a feast. If you are sick, then there is a dimension of him that can address that. If you are not sick but oppressed of the devil, there is a dimension of him. Now, it's important for us to understand how God answers prayers. Because many of us have been praying. We have prayed here over our issues. There are many of us, what you need tonight is prayers and wisdom. That is the answer that you need. Wisdom. You may not be sick, but a lot of your decisions may not be accurate. And you will need a supply of wisdom or higher wisdom. Number two. There are people tonight, the miracle you need is grace for obedience. Grace for obedience. Grace for obedience. That spiritual inertia, that reluctance to rise up, responding to your conviction, is what has kept many of us where we are. There are people tonight, your prayers will be answered to deliverance. There is no discussion. You don't need counseling. You need those spirits out of your life. And the legal basis 
not just the spirits out of your life but the legal authorization that keeps them in your life keeps them in your family there are people tonight the answer to your prayer is healing for your body healing for your soul do you know years ago I didn't pay so much attention to what people call emotional healing I felt it was very feminine and for lazy people most I, I felt any serious person needed physical healing or spiritual healing if you needed emotional healing you needed orientation too but it's not true um, emotional healing can be more painful than physical healing are we together the Bible says a broken spirit can dry the bones where the life of a man is carved out there are people in need of all kinds of healing there are people tonight the answer to your prayer is repentance and forgiveness that's how God will answer you you need to forgive and you also need to repent that's your miracle service tonight there are people tonight the answer to your prayer is prophecy you need a prophetic word you need a direct prophetic word that addresses your issues no long story no discussion alongside the creative power that flows through prophecy pay attention there are people tonight the answer to your prayer is an impartation of favor it's very clear that if favor came into your life you would not be where you are favor there are people tonight the answer to your prayer is a direct impartation greater fire greater unction greater activation of the gifts of the spirit greater activation of of a higher capacity for spiritual things There are people tonight, your own miracle service is an introduction of the mercy of God over your life and situation. Everybody here will receive tonight through one or more of these means. A supply of wisdom, grace for obedience, deliverance from spirits, healing, repentance forgiveness prophecy favor impartation your assignment is to be sensitive to when your word comes you see that like the lady who was already shouting while the meeting started something is already happening to her you see god is already doing his business with her for someone in the overflow you may be in maybe overflow three overflow three the fence is covered and they almost cannot see me directly except through the screen doesn't matter the only thing you benefit standing close to a man of God is convenience in the realm of the spirit it doesn't matter whether you are here whether you are outside whether you are online whether you are in any nation doesn't matter the time zone the most important thing is when your faith can connect to the anointing then a supply of the power of God comes your direction tonight brothers and sisters I present to you a God who is almighty tonight I present to you a king that can heal that can change situations the Bible says where the word of a king is there is power I present to you one who is not limited by our situations I present to you one who is loving enough to respond to you I present to you one who loves you enough to change your life I present to you one who can give you value for your time spent in his presence God is not a herbalist God is not a prophet he walked on the earth and manifested those things but he's God Almighty I want your heart to be open tonight especially if you are here for the first time you may have come gone through all the rigors of the inconvenience to position yourself somewhere you must open up your heart to receive we have prayed we've partnered with God and God is ready to deliver 
that which is your portion in full in full in full not part of it remember the negotiation that pharaoh wanted he wanted to broker a negotiation and said let your wives go leave your kids behind and and moses said no way that's not what god told me everything must go plus animals so you're going to insist tonight that even if it's your hair falling god must come in and touch it don't say it does not matter why believe god in one area and not believe in another regardless of the area it is still the power of god that will solve it don't trust God to heal your body and then not change your financial situation. No. Don't trust God to step in and deliver you from oppression and then you go back sick again. Do you believe tonight that the Lord is going to step in and change your life? Truly speaking, let me tell you this. God has granted me the privilege to walk in dimensions of his anointing. It still marvels me after many years of working in the anointing how the anointing works it's still a marvel to me at how when the power of God truly locates someone how his life changes overnight overnight except it's not the power of God that meets you you won't know it will change all of a sudden you will see doors open My elder sister shared with me a testimony today. She probably might be following online. Something that God did in her life. And I'm not a very emotional person, but I was almost fighting tears. I said, God already, 1st of October. A strange, these are, the, these, are the, these are the kinds of miracles. Listen, these are the kinds of miracles that when you hear, if only one of it happens per year, you are happy major miracles that can shift your life i said lord thank you because my family members are also partaking because they have to believe too that they are my family members does not mean they will believe automatically no the brothers of jesus kept watching him and he said don't be watching no release your faith some of you here are sitting you have cried in the secret you have cried in the open let this be your last cry Are we together? Only God knows the pain that some of you are seated here with. The level of pain you are, you are seated. That, see, this is why we fast and pray and prepare. Because we will be wicked to allow people come. Some of you started your journey since last week. You have come to come, spend time, spend resources. No, this is not a cinema hall. This is not a place of games. Some of you have carried sick people. Some of you have carried sick bodies. There is a God that can reward. There is a God that can reward. Please hear me. I may not claim I know everything about God. But I know this God enough to know he's mighty. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Listen, listen. Let me teach you something about the anointing. The anointing introduces possibilities in your life. These are things that were not there. If it's not there, you can't say it's there. It's a lie. Tonight, don't tell lies. There are things that are not in your life but should be there. The agency that will bring it is the anointing. There is favor that should be in your life but it's not in your life. If it's not there, everybody will know. When it comes, we will also know. There were things that were not in my life years ago. When it came, I knew to the degree that brought it. Listen, tonight is the ministry of the spirit. I told you it's the anointing that is responsible for the result. It is the, the it is a how shall these things be? What is the dynamics? He said the power of the highest. That's how it happens. It has never changed. 
it is always an encounter with the anointing your the job of your faith is to connect you to the anointing it is never faith that moves god no your faith connects you to the power of god tonight i came with an anointing there is enough grace there is enough anointing i tell you this there is enough anointing if you will believe there is enough anointing your situation is not the first your situation is the is not the first your family situation is not the greatest there is nothing new under the sun god's ability is god's ability is working in me it's working in me it's god's ability god's ability is working in me It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. solution to your problem is in the anointing seek an encounter with it when the anointing comes to you that's the answer that's the answer listen listen when the anointing comes your direction that's your answer that's God answering your prayer I'm not talking about falling down I'm talking about an encounter the answer is in the anointing your faith only connects you to the anointing Your life can change in a moment your life can change in a moment God is a prayer answering God he answers prayers by releasing his power he sends his power through his word in the direction where it is needed and received needed and received
Please lift your hands. The prayer answering God. The prayer answering God. There is a God that answers prayers. Koinonia, he answers prayers with his power. He answers prayers with the anointing. The anointing is answered prayer the anointing is answered prayer the anointing kato soto kata is answered prayers barakoto shote ketele kata the anointing is answered prayer it is by the anointing there is no other way it is by the anointing please lift your hands the lord is going to do a very quick walk tonight i'm hearing people crying in the spirit and the holy ghost is telling me these are those who have been delayed delayed by the power of darkness I'm about to release the anointing upon people experiencing delay. Bring them out. I stretch my hands. Delay. You come on that judgment. You come on that judgment. Delay. Delay. I stretch my hands. All the overflows online. Anyone here. Any family. Under the spirit of delay. Bring them out. Sakoto Shabariata. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare the fire of God breaking the chains of delay 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 breaking the chains of delay, the chains of delay. bring them out the day Papu, wani kamar takai. Delay over, over forever. There is an anointing. I told you the anointing is the answer to the prayers. There is an anointing. Papu, wani I'm seeing in this main bowl sixteen people. I'm seeing a number sixteen. Where are they? I stretch my hands. That sword of the spirit breaking delay. There are families with a covenant of delay. A covenant of delay. A covenant of delay. Breaking now. Breaking now. Breaking now. The covenant of delay. Shakatatata. Reketo Kosotoba. The covenant of delay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow three, please look at me on the screen. You don't need to bring them here. It's too long a distance. Those inside that building, just look at me on the screen. Because I'm seeing angels moving at overflow three. And I want to pray for you overflow three right now in the name of Jesus right where you are in the name of Jesus I'm seeing the number 24 24 people right at overflow three the Lord is breaking delay breaking delay from them breaking delay right now breaking delay hallelujah there are still people Listen, I want you to believe in what God is doing. I want you to have a testimony. 
without an encounter with his power it will just be a religious service i promise you and you will go back it is the power of god the power of god is what draws the line hallelujah delay delay god is not yet done where is that family oh lord that nobody has moved forward i'm seeing delay don't worry god is coming in the anointing of the spirit is looking for a family there is a family there is a family there is a family they are here there is a family jesus help this woman there is a family this is not just an individual thing there is a family the power of god is searching for a family that the devil has kept 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 so that they will not rise hallelujah we are going to be fast tonight there are many things to do i want you to be sensitive the lord is showing me a vision now and i'm seeing a grave i'm seeing something that looks like a black leather inside that grave and i'm seeing an angel of the lord pull it out and the lord is saying this was done against a family lord where is that family right now i stretch my hands whoever programmed the earth to fight any family tonight is a night of resurrection I decree and declare let it come out now let it come out the breakthrough of that family the healing of that family the miracle of that family I release it now hallelujah hallelujah I'm standing here and I'm looking at this stage one two three four five six seven i'm counting seven stones and the lord is saying these are tight destinies this is the whole destiny of a family seven of them but may the sword of the god i serve in the name of jesus any family tied down by witchcraft any family tied down by ordinances i decree and declare by the blood of jesus liberty tonight liberty tonight hallelujah I'm seeing a family and there are four ladies and all the four ladies have a growth either a breast lump or something in their body four ladies all of them have it in the name of Jesus Christ wherever this family is regardless of what what overflow I stretch my hands now in the name of Jesus Christ that family does not need healing that family needs deliverance. I command deliverance right now. Shakato skata, lekata koto soto priyata. I command deliverance for that family now. I command deliverance now. When I was praying, I saw at least eight women that were barren no child doesn't matter what years some of them connected to families 
and the Lord told me he was going to open the wombs of every single one of them every single one of them every single one of them please lift your hands I want to pray now I believe in deliverance I really do this mama there's serious witchcraft in your family as I'm praying for you now I'm seeing a rope a rope I'm seeing a rope and the Lord is saying that I should set this mama free I'm just being fast because I want us to conserve time hallelujah listen do you know why we do not minister deliverance just as a religious thing no it is a way of separating people and the influences that tie them down that's what I want to do now I want to pray listen many of you inside many of you outside are here now because of spirits you may not believe it you may not agree but it's true they are the forces responsible for the pain and the tragedies that we are going through but I want to pray for you now your own is to believe just do what I'm asking you to do we have already prayed if those spirits do not clear out of your life there is no breakthrough you, you would have come to waste your time let me tell you the truth it is when those forces leave your life families here spirits have sat on the destinies of families do your worst go to school and come back and meet us get a job and see come back and meet us marry and come back and meet us are we together it's time for them to go lift your hands everyone I want to pray for you now I'm going to command those devils to leave you listen it's not a suggestion they must go they must leave you are we together now I'm praying for you please now because the ushers are doing their best the protocol is doing their best but there is only so much they may not be able to help people there are people outside please be your brother's neighbor if someone is under the anointing and is capsizing to enjoy himself you can do well to help please you can help at least manage the ushers will come for it because this prayer I'm about to pray now is going to bring strange manifestations in people I see a lot of wild spirits wicked ancient spirits all shapes and all sizes they must go now just one instruction I just want you to shout when I ask you the name of Jesus once and at the top of your voice now listen don't be surprised when you find out that demons are manifesting through you it doesn't mean you are possessed no that's a different thing altogether some of you as you are here you are representing your family nothing may be wrong with you as a person but because of your family are you ready now lift your hands father in the name of Jesus you have anointed this place as a place of fire a place of grace and deliverance there are lives and destinies that have been tied down for ages and in the name of Jesus at the sound of my voice may your voice be my voice may your grace be my voice I send an alarm to the length and breadth of this place that at the count of three anyone that shouts that name let there be deliverance right now are you ready one two three i command those devils go now go now ancestral spirits spirit husbands spirit wives yokes of darkness i command you by the power of the Holy Ghost ancient spirits spirits that have been generational 
familiar spirits I command you now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost overflow one overflow two overflow three let them go now let them go now lift your hands lift your hands i'm seeing a number of ladies there are all kinds of spirits manifesting in the night as a man and a woman manifesting as animals in your sleeps and dreams in the name of jesus where are those ladies fire is looking for them now i separate you from those spirits i separate you from those covenants i separate you from those ordinances any man any woman any entity appearing to you in the night using the faces of men and animals in the name of jesus i command by the spirit a severance between you and them hallelujah sir this baba can i talk to you sir please come god is about to change your story forever i don't know you sir but i want to pray for you stand up please stand up sir i'm looking at you in a vision and i'm seeing you are not alone you came with some people the, your children one one child your son eh? only you no there's a son he's here where is he come come and stand daddy i want to pray for you that this life of hardship god one please stand up please stand up you don't have to kneel down sir this is your dad I want to pray for you you came believing eh august is it augustus i'm hearing the name augustus augustus is it augustus is it augustus augustine or something augustus please if that's your name let me just talk to you quickly i want to minimize personal prophecy so that we can do much we want to pray for the sick i want to take out time and do an extensive deliverance tonight because there are people that my sister come this lady this one not you you are not a woman my brother this come lift your hands shout over, over. forever in the name of jesus christ for you and your family it's over in the name of jesus christ sir if you have never believed a man of god in your life what is about to happen to you there is a reason why i asked you to come because the lord showed me that there was a son and i want to prophesy to you that this life of hardship will end like smoke before the wind you believe it sir receive it right now in the name of jesus it's over right now i stretch my hands and i decree and declare that it's over in the name of jesus over forever sir hold my hands go and prosper in the name of jesus christ go and prosper by the anointing of the spirit of god go and prosper gabriel who is gabriel gabriel i'm hearing the name gabriel please let's hurry up so that we don't waste time gabriel gabriel is he gabriel what's your name huh augustine come you are gabriel why is he here augustine I want to pray for you. Where's your family? My dad is around. My sister. Hold on. There's a man wearing white. Is he your father? White shirt. Yes, Call him. Let him come. Who is that? Who is that? There's somebody. I'm seeing somebody wearing white. What's, please coordinate them. What? You're welcome, sir. Your name is Gabriel, sir. I'm going to pray for you. Please stand here. I want to pray for you. This is the guy wearing white. Come. What is he? My brother. Your brother. Come and stand. God wants to change your life. 
I don't know you, but I saw someone standing close to you wearing white. That's why I said there's somebody wearing white. Two of you, I want to pray for you. You love Jesus. God is going to change your life. Why is he here? Your name is Gabriel too. You too? I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God. Honestly, I tell you, God is visiting families. I don't know if it's because it's first October, but I see strange miracles. You, this one, put your hand on your stomach there. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire coming on you. And the Lord is, I should tell you, he's taking something away from your stomach. That's what is happening right now. In the name of Jesus, I command that thing to go now. My brother, there is oppression. There's a spirit that you need to be delivered from. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Out now of his life and his family. Help two of them. God is delivering them. This is the spirit that is destroying their family. What's your name, sir? Augustine. Augustine. Where's the other Augustine? Okay, you are the one. You are the Augustine. Where are you from? Abia State. Abia State. Yes. I want to pray for you. God wants to give your family a miracle. Do you believe that? Lift your hands. There's bad luck in your life. The Lord is asking me to end it now. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands. I end bad luck. Over. The boy doesn't even believe. As you are standing, the anointing still touch you, but he doesn't have faith. Don't come and stand here and you are wondering. I'm not a herbalist. Have I prayed for you? What's your name? Ye two. Ye two. What is Ye two? I'm seeing Y E. Is it Y E T U or Ye two or Ye two? Something like that. Ye two. Something that has to do with Ye two. Y E T U. I don't know if it's part of someone's name or something. Ye two. Who is that? That's her name. What's her name? Ye two. Can you imagine? How can you call somebody's name Yetu? You can guess Gabriel, you can guess Mary. But Yetu, I want to pray. There's something being taken from her life. Hold my hands. And the Lord is saying I should take it away. In the name of Jesus, let it roll like a curtain. And leave her life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is of the devil. And I release your wife right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus your miracle has come your miracle has come you love Jesus my friend look at me you love Jesus I want to pray for you ah, in the name of Jesus why is she here your dad there is a copper that I want to pray for there is a copper something is coming on you my dear Let me pray for you. Don't worry. If, if, I, if all I do, I, I just lay my hands on you. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Please, why are you here? You are Gabriel? Gabriel. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for this guy. God is giving you favor. Great favor. Great favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's, there's bad luck in your life and your family. But it's going now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's going. That's why you're here. Gabriel. Aleku is there. This is like an idol. Oleku or Aleku. Eh? Aleku. Aleku. Who is that? Eh? Hold on. Where are you from? Aleku. This is something that has to do with a tree. Is there something like that? He said, What? Why are they coming out? What is why are you? They named somebody after the idol, and the Lord is saying, who, who is the person? Whose name? This is it's not just an idol. We are going to pray for Benway State. But the, every state has a devil somewhere. I'm saying this is like somebody's name. Ale, Ale Ku was Ale something like that. Ale Ku also. Who is this? Huh? What's that?
Alleluia. Praise God. Alleluia. What's your name? Eh? Grace. Please, can you help us with this mic? The mic, please. Where are you from? Benway. You are from Benway. Yes. The Lord is showing me something. Look at me. If I'm right, say I'm right. If, if it's no, say no. I'm seeing you lying down and you are having a dream. Yes. And in the dream, you are calling this name I've been calling. Yes. Is that true? They call that name three times. One, two, three. That idol. Is that true? Yes. Sir. From that day when you woke up, your life was never the same again. Is that true? Give her the mic now. Let her talk. Yes. Sir. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Hold my hands. If you are from Benway here, hold my hands. Anything, any programming that has been done with any God, you will be surprised what will happen now. In the name of Jesus Christ, anyone here from Benway whose destiny has been tied to any tree or any devil, right now, I use this lady as a point of contact. As God is touching her, Shakato Totokata. Out of their lives now. Out of their destinies now. Daddy, let me pray for you, sir. This is your first time here? No, sir. I've been coming, sir. You've been coming, sir? Yes. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? Sir? What do you do? I'm a staff of a medical university. I have to pray for you, sir. Because I look at you, and not, not only because I'm looking at you, nobody will look at you and know, but there's serious depression, and I have to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, you have, do you know what they call the cause of hardship? You are not a lazy man, but there is hardship in your life. And the Lord is asking me to help you. Can I pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray for this, our daddy. Let there be a miracle right now in his life. I command this yoke of hardship to go. Let it go forever. In the name of Jesus. Let it go forever. Jumai. 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 Is that your name? Uh, well, I'll pray for you, but this is not the person I'm seeing. Jumai. I'll pray for you. Your family is oppressed. There is a spirit that must go now. Bring her. I've not even started praying. Bring her. There is a, a, a wicked spirit that I see in this family. A very wicked spirit that I see in this family. This is something that is older than, older than old. This is hundreds of years old. But in the name of Jesus, I'm praying now. I use you as a point of contact. I command that spirit, you must go now. Hallelujah. Please, just allow me. This is, Juma, I'll pray for you. But I'm seeing a family. This is like a curse. No matter what the men do, they never rise. The Lord is saying I should break it. Something is happening to a family right now. Let me pray. My sister, this is your first time here. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Don't be afraid. As I pray for you, the Lord is going to open a door in your destiny that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus, I hold your hands now and decree and declare that everything that has tied you down, everything that has tied you down, Right now, in the name of Jesus, there is disfavor in your life. Anybody who plans to bless you, something turns them away from you. Anybody who plans to bless you, something turns them away from you. I hold your hands and I release you right now. In Jesus' name. I want to pray in a hurry. There is a family. All the men. It doesn't matter whether you are hardworking, whether you go to school or not. But the Lord is asking me to pray for that family right now. Lord, where are they? I'm stretching my hands now and I'm declaring anyone here inside, outside, under the sound of my voice that belongs to this category as I stretch my hands right now I release the power of God to that family right now 
I speak to the men in that family arise now arise now arise now arise now arise now help that woman arise now arise now the men in that family arise now arise now in the name of Jesus there's somebody here you lost your job in the month of March March you lost your job please where is that person you were working but in the month of March I want us to hurry up I, I'm, I'm trying to see that we conserve time the month of March I don't know if you are except if he's a person his family maybe overflow tree then they can just locate him you lost your job there's something you lost your job in the month of March where is that person Please quickly, if there's someone like that. What were you doing? I was a banker. I was a banker. You were a banker? Yes, sir. Something happened? Yes, sir. And they dismissed you? Yes, sir. What are you doing now? I'm doing my PG program for now. Do you believe if I pray for you, you'll get a job? Yes, sir. Will you come and testify? Yes, sir. <laughs> Where? Where have you been praying for? Sir, sorry. Where have you been praying for for a job? Uh, same bank. Bank same job. bank. Same bank. You want them to call you back? Yes, sir. Do you believe they can call you back? Sure. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Because you see, I'm looking at something that had to do with money, and truly the guy was innocent. But they just joined people and since there was nobody to stand for him they joined everybody and threw them out but in the name of jesus whatever should not leave you and left you i call it back to your life now i call it back to your life now i call it back to your life now hear me I know many of you may not why is he here sir come well stand up sir you were outside yes, overflow three overflow three yes you sir. lost your job where were you working i'm working in hospital which as hospital? an accountant which hospital Tukutuku medical centers so that you see we don't ask this question because we are prying into your privacy. I hope you are not embarrassed. Sometimes we ask it so that people don't think that this thing, because there are still people with all these things they see, they still believe that maybe someone is playing games. At least this one is not, you are watching it now. Which hospital, sir? Tukutuku Medical Center, Zaria. At uh, Tukutuku. Okay, where are you working now? I'm just, I'm managing with one private school. What do you want God to do for you? Just to get back the job. Back to that place? No, 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 no. Another job, sir. Another job? Yes. Do you believe if I pray for you, God will give you a job? I believe that. Do you know why I'm prophesying to you in the open? So that you will testify in the open too. What's your name, sir? I'm Paul. Paul? Yes, sir. God will give you a job, eh? Amen. The heaven of heavens belongs to the Lord. Listen. So when it has to do things there, we don't legislate. We make petitions. But the earth has he given to the sons of men. I give you a job now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. He will go and return with him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, how many of us are trusting God for healing miracles? Or came with loved ones that are really sick? Okay, we have a lot to do. So what will happen is, we'll take a break now to minister very quickly to the sick. And then after that, I'm still going to minister to people shortly before we do the final prayer. Will that be okay? Now, but while we're doing that, please, no laziness. There will be prayer points. Are we together? There will be prayer points. Once the prayer point comes, pray. Because in that prayer point, you will receive your miracle. Praise the Lord. But don't sit down yet. I'm, I'm not walking around, but I just want to. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord directing me to someone. There is, there is something that we must settle here. 
I'm seeing an anointing going around this place. I'm seeing an anointing going around this area. There is oppression over someone's destiny. That's the lady in the name of Jesus. I command that devil to go now. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring her out. There's no space here, right? Please, don't push them. Don't push them. We are coming back. Just take her out to wait for me. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? I want to get you on her. Can I get you on her? I want to get you on her. I want to pray for you. I will pray for you. Let it be over now. That oppression. Let it be over by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is where I'm coming to. In the name of Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. In the name of Jesus. I saw light moving across here. And God wants to visit a family right now. Three of them. One, two, three. Where are they? Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the visitation come now. No hiding. The Lord must touch them. That's why you came. The Lord must touch you. Casting crowds, lifting hands, bowing hearts, that's all we come to do. Let her go now. Casting crowds, out, lifting hands, bowing hearts, that's all we come to do. In your name. That girl, look at me. Shout Jesus. Something is tying you. Let it lose you now. I stretch my hands to you. Let it be over now. Hallelujah. Now please, for those of you coming here for the first time, we take our time. We, you see that we don't announce instant miracles except because we don't have the time. Our time is very limited. Praise the Lord. Now this is what we are going to do. Um, while I give you the prayer request, please listen carefully. Those, please listen carefully. I want to pray particularly, particularly, no matter what overflow you are in, if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, don't come now. But when it's time to come, I want you to come. I want to pray for you by myself. But any other issue, those inside, I want you to come stand here. And then part of overflow two, maybe half of overflow two can join them. Now overflow one, please you go to your projector stand. Overflow two and those spilling over at the roadside. You can move to the projector stand. Overflow three. If God grants grace and there's time, I'll just run and come and visit you briefly. Just to let you know we're together. Overflow 3, move to your projector stand. Hallelujah. And we're going to pray very quickly. Please, if they don't prophesy to you or they don't minister to you, don't worry. We have to pray quickly so that I'll focus and do other things. I want everybody to receive. Will that be fine? But those who are trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you're in overflow, one, two, three, wherever, I like you to please come. Those online, doesn't matter any nation, those following us online, doesn't matter your nation, you're trusting God for a miracle. I want you to connect right now by faith. Hallelujah. So we're going to do three things at the same time. Number one, you're going to be submitting your prayer request to the ushers. Number two, you're going to be praying the prayers that I'll give you while preparing our faith. And then number three, we'll come out. Is that all right? Praise the Lord. So let's do that very quickly. Very quickly, please. You're trusting God or you came with a sick person. Now is your time to come out, please. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Jesus, we bless you. I don't know. You reign. Casting crowds, lifting hands, 
bowing hearts It's what we've come to do Casting rods We are lifting hands Bowing hearts It's what we've come to do It's in your name In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave her now. Leave her now. In the name of Jesus. Can you lay your hands on her, Jimmy? Just on her chest or anywhere. Just touch her there. In the name of Jesus, I decree. I curse that spirit. You go and you go forever. In the name of Jesus. Now this is what will happen. Please, we are going to be very fast. We have to be fast. You see that there are lots of people. Uh, our miracle services. If you came with someone, uh, just be patient. We are going to attend to them. Praise the Lord. Thank God we have, uh, we have many hands. And by the grace of God, we will coordinate. We will make it very fast. Ushers, please be collecting the prayer requests. If your loved ones are yet to send their own, send them a text quickly. And she can join the queue. Just keep them somewhere. I'm going to lay my hands on them. Praise the Lord. How many overflows do we have? There's an extra overflow I see by the road. It has spilled over. Maybe overflow four. You can, uh, let's see. We have to be fast. Praise the Lord. Okay, this is what will happen. Um, Pastor Jimmy will be at the overflow outside here. Pastor Alpha, you'll be at the overflow here. Benga, you would go to overflow three. Um, is there someone outside here? Who is outside here? Pastor Alpha is outside. Um, promise. Promise you will be here with Pastor Alpha. And then um, Pastor Femi, you'll be with um, you'll be with Benga right there at the overflow inside here i don't know how many people are left and by god's grace god will grant us grace and we'll have a lot more people to be able to minister okay kenny kenny join join um a jimmy you join a jimmy there i think that's that's all right so far let's let's just trust god for grace father we agree in the name of jesus christ that for everyone we are praying for, it doesn't matter who lays hands on them, let there be miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be miracles. The devil is a liar. Let there be miracles. In the name of Jesus, put your hand on your stomach, my dear. I want to remove something from your body now. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit, that devilish spirit. Father, let there be miracles in Jesus' name. Please, let's go very quickly. We will need more hands. I don't know. If we still have people, I know they may. Aaron, what if you are not doing anything? Please, if you can help out in Overflow 3 with them so that at least we can help to coordinate things there. Praise the Lord. Father, let there be an avalanche of miracles here right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please worship team. You are going to give us, we are going to pray one prayer first. I'd like you to decree and declare and say, Father, I prophesy over myself that my miracle locates me now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Father, we give you all the praise. Do what only you know how to do. Come and change my story. Give me a testimony. Do what only you know how to do. Can I hear you say to God only you? You are only you know how to do. Can you lift up a voice and say, Do what only you know? Do what only you know how to do. Hey, yeah. come and change, come and change my story. Give me a testimony. Give me a testimony. Do what only you know. Do what only you know how to do. Somebody say, Do what. Do. 
Zion's King, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Mighty in this place, mighty. Are we done? Are all the requests here, please? In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I bow my knees before the God of my covenant and I decree and declare that every request placed here, I turn it to a testimony now. I turn it to a testimony now. Strange testimonies now. Strange testimonies now. Lord, I cry that you step in and do impossible miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, let me tell you. There are things written here that except the writer, if you read it, you won't even believe that it can happen. But I pray, the God who has the all-seeing eye that can see every request, a representation of every man's pain here, I call on that God, answer by fire. Answer by fire. Father, there are issues here that are impossible with men. Some of them have deadlines that cannot be achieved humanly. But in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I prophesy, let there be strange miracles. Strange miracles now. For all those connecting from whatever nation, in the name of Jesus, we agree with you here. The same fire that is on this altar through the internet to your various localities you receive the same testimony in the name of Jesus. Every human agent that must partner with God for this request to be granted we force them from their hiding places to appear now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever must die for this request to be answered. In the name of Jesus, the ground opens and swallows them. Whoever must lack sleep for this request to be granted. We seize their peace and their sleep now. Hear me? Any mortal man that says over his dead body for you to testify, may God answer their prayers this night. Lord is opening my eyes I know they are still ministering outside let's be patient the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing trees I'm seeing trees in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing these trees it's like a representation of families hold on please I'm seeing these trees like a representation of families and I'm looking at it I've never seen a tree bringing out blood human blood but in this vision I'm seeing a tree, but I'm seeing human blood. This is like a representation of families. I decree and declare. I don't know what family the devil is taking advantage of, but I want to pray now. I'm not prophesying. I'm speaking for, for God to locate a family that must not go back this night in this situation. 
Lord, I decree and declare wherever that family is, right now in the name of Jesus, may the fire of God locate that family now. May the fire of God locate that family now. The Lord is releasing an anointing, hold on, over people. Is for supernatural clarity and direction. That's what I hear. Receive it now. People are receiving it. People are receiving it. I prophesy. Clarity, clarity. God is answering questions now by the anointing. If that fire comes on you, you are receiving direction right now. Clarity, clarity. All the overflows, clarity. I release that anointing right now. God is giving clarity. Listen, I'm still praying it. I'm seeing anointings that will translate as answers. Should I stay here or should I relocate somewhere else? Should I start the project or should I stop? Every confusion and anointing is answering it now. An anointing is answering it now. An anointing is answering it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm praying for everybody, but I'm seeing particularly overflow one. An anointing for divine recovery. Divine recovery. Let me tell you something. Whatever leaves you can come back to your life. Are you hearing now? There are people who have lost things. I'm about to call it into your life now. And as that anointing comes on you, just know that it's your time of recovery. Lord, where are they? Where are those who have lost things that need recovery? Shakata kata kata. Shakata kata kata. Proskete kata. Everywhere, everywhere. Everywhere. Inside, outside, outside. The grace for recovery. The grace for recovery. I release that grace now over individuals and over families over individuals and over families individuals who have lost things lost things lost opportunities lost opportunities somebody is recovering an opportunity somebody is recovering something that left you hallelujah the angel of the lord is leading me here there are at least four people this grace for recovery must come upon you i'm seeing at least four people something you have lost is about to look for you something you have lost must look for you i force it to look for you by the power of the holy ghost hallelujah listen let me tell you I told you God answers you by bringing the anointing in your direction. That collision with the anointing is what will program your testimony. And all of a sudden you will see strange testimonies happening to you. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a strong man in four families that God is clearing out of the way. Listen. Listen. I don't say things like this lightly but i'm seeing at least i'm seeing two women and two men who have sat for long on the destinies of people they don't even know they are the ones where are they inside and outside whoever in the name of jesus by the fire of the holy ghost any man sitting on anybody's destiny here you want to rise but they stop you you want to move but they sit on your glory i clear them out of the way now listen you should attend a miracle service like this and know that you attended a miracle service like this mama you see that the devil wants to kill this woman with cancer eat her into pieces with cancer and destroy her your mother you are the ones who brought her hold the mother and two of you come 
you two of you need deliverance first leave mama come come and stand someone should hold or get a seat for mama to sit i've prayed for her but i'm looking i'm this is this your mother two of you i want to pray for you eh what you need i know you brought your mother to be healed of cancer but for you god must heal you first you will need deliverance eh? i'm not saying you are witches but i have to pray for you this is the instruction god is giving me father in the name of jesus you will not allow these ladies to go down the way of trouble and sorrow and pain and discouragement therefore i lay my hands on you in the name of jesus fire over every wicked devil in the name of jesus you came to stand in for your mother but satan has his own plan for you in the name of jesus Hi. wickedness is real i held these ladies and the lord showed me a vision i'm seeing a man a real herbalist sitting down on the ground and i'm seeing something that looks like a pot they are writing names of people with blood blood not chalk they will write it and throw it inside the pot write it and throw it this is an Igbo family write it throw it inside the pot lord i don't know why you showed me this vision but in the name of jesus I don't care where the family is but in the name of first my first prayer point is that that herbalist must die first in the name of Jesus Christ if you don't like the prayer point say amen to the one you believe but my first prayer point is that the wicked herbalist this is someone's destiny these people are here oh I'm praying you may not even know you are the one I say it again whoever is that man on the ground writing whose name whether it's your marital destiny whether it's your breakthrough in the name of Jesus let the earth open and swallow that wicked man who say now who say now? Who say now? Who is that, please? Let her come, please, quickly. You are who say now? What's your name? Huh? Who say now? I want to pray for you. Eh? I'll pray for two of you, but you are the one I want to pray for. What's your name? From where? What state are you from? You are from FCT. Do you believe in favor? Shout it. Favor. No, you are not shouting. You have shout favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a lot of bad luck for you and your family and this is what God is bringing for you. Favor. Who say now I want to pray for you? You are who say now to madam? Please come. You too? Is it mother and daughter or you are coming by yourself? You are, you are who say now to? I'll pray for you. But this is the lady I want to speak to. You love Jesus with all your heart. I want to pray for you. God is bringing a major breakthrough for you and your family. Major breakthrough. I lay my hands right now and I command it. Let it happen right now. In the name of Jesus. Where are you from, my dear? Jalingo. Taraba. In the name of Jesus. The Lord gives you a miracle. Now. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Every bad luck must leave your life now. Eh? Every bad luck must leave your life. I lay my hands and I command that spirit to go. This lady, only bad things look for her. There are people like that. When good things come, they just turn. There is a spirit that turns it away. Everybody is getting a job. Something that is simple. When is your turn? Let me tell you something. Hardship is not poverty. Hardship is a spirit. You get things, but something you can get for two weeks will take you four years. It's hardship. It's a cost. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You can't go, give God glory under that kind of condition. Simple things. You ask somebody out, I want to marry you. They answer you after four years. It's a cost. Are you, are you a demon? It's a cost. You start a building project, you finish after ten years. It's not a blessing. 
a hard life is worse than poverty this is what the devil has put on the life of this lady I, I take it away now in the name of Jesus and I use as a point of contact if there is anything on anyone's head that is responsible for bad luck happening in the name of Jesus I command whatever it is let the fire of God come upon it now let me pray for you man in the name of Jesus I lay my hands upon you and I release favor in the name of Jesus favor I'm seeing someone you are into printing please let's hurry up we have to stop a few minutes now so that you are into printing you print like um, posters whatever it is you design you print banners please who is that person I want to pray for you you are into printing uh, I will pray for you but the person I'm seeing I'm not saying if you want to do it if you are currently doing it you are into it for how long? Since my, my child was up. I was born into printing. Your father is a printer? Yes, sir. Where do you do it? Mina. Mina. Yes, sir. From Mina, you came here? I'm serving in Kagzara. In, in because the person I'm seeing is about to lose a lot of money. This is a contract or project that someone will give you. You will suffer and do it and something will happen and destroy that whole job. And the person will say you must pay. And it's going to cost you hundreds. I don't know. Well, may not be so much money to you, but I'm seeing something losses of at least this is a very big project that the person is even angry. I'm seeing something that even has to do with police because the person will say that he went and gave the job. All of you are into printing. What are you printing? I'm into printing. What printing? Books, everything in every press. Books. You yes. too? Your dad. All of you, I'll pray for you. You are standing for somebody. We have to avert this. This time of recession is not the best time to get into trouble with police. Say amen. amen. We want to stop it now. So that whether it's your fault or not, when you are in trouble, you are in trouble. And you see, the way the devourer works is that he will wait just when I'm, I'm soon going to do that prayer. Where things work, just when the miracle is about to happen something happens and destroys your life i have to pray for you where is your dad huh? he, stays in abuja. he stays in abuja that's where you stay too yes what's your name peace peace i want to pray so that we'll stop trouble eh? in the name of jesus daddy we use your daughter as a point of contact to pray every trouble we avert now you too you are into the printing where abu press. press yes sir. you work with abu press yes you walk there now it's not your own okay but i will still pray for you in the name of jesus christ grace the one for me now i release you eh? can i pray for businesses yes, sir. can i speak over businesses huh you are into printing uh, what's your name hasana hasan you 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 need to um well, I don't mean to embarrass you, but you are very shabby. Huh? You need to organize your life. You're a smart young man, but you see how you are looking like uh, a thief. You'll be smart when you are coming to the house of God. Listen, when you, people are, when you are coming to the house of God, don't embarrass him. This is a family, but you look smart. You don't dress, you see, no shoes. Your hair is scattered, not combed. You look smart. Eh? You are my friend. I want you, it will be difficult for you to progress in life like this. Be difficult for you to get a good wife like this. It'll be difficult for you to get many good things. Appearance is the seed for acceptance. Don't say it doesn't matter. Dress well. The house.
Lord organize his life in the name of Jesus Christ. Organize his destiny. There is a spirit of excellence. Excellence is a spirit. You receive it in Jesus' name. I'll quickly pray for you. Doesn't matter where you're standing. You, you are into printing too. You too. In the name of Jesus, all those into printing, I lay my hands, Pastor Lawrence, grace for you. You will do well. You will get jobs in Jesus' name. There are some of us, what we need now, we are at a point in our lives where humanly speaking, we have paid our price. What you need is favor. And we are going to pray. It. Is that true? Are there people like that here? There are others you have not paid your price. Paying for favor is putting you into trouble. What I need to pray for you for is grace not to be lazy. Laziness is also a spirit. Many of us don't know. It takes a lot of laziness. Um, something is leaving you. That devil must go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are into printing too? In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is somebody you sew clothes. You are a serious tailor. But for a long time, this is from April. Everything just went down. I don't mean gradually down like this. It's almost as if, please, who is that person? You are a tailor. You sew clothes. You are a serious tailor, but something just happened. I'm seeing the month of April and everything just went down. You are the one? You sew clothes? Where? Down. Who knows you? If you are a serious tailor, they should know you here. Who are, who, you've sewn people's clothes here? Okay, Zango. Yes, there's a shop. I'm what? Sorry. Then what happened? There's a shop. I'm working for somebody. So last month he sent me out and closed the shop for no reason. Last month. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll pray for you. If you did something wrong and they pursued you, when you come here you ask for mercy. You don't complain. Even if it's my shop and you don't do well, I will drive you. Everybody wants to succeed. So let's, let's be very honest when we are before God. Praise God. When you are before God, if you tell the truth, that's even what will provoke his mercy. You understand? If, you, if, if I employ you, don't be embarrassed, my dear, but if I employ you and you are not bringing me anything and I'm paying you, why won't I downsize and drive you? So don't make it look as if because this person you are saying drove you. I'm not seeing the person as a wicked person. No. Something happened and it's your fault. Eh? You need the mercy of God. And God will help you. Don't make it. You see that if, if it's not revelation now, you will now blame someone else and say that person is wicked. My prayer for you is that God will bless you too. Huh? But please, don't be angry. I'm not seeing that person. That person did exactly what I would have done. Father, in the name of Jesus, show your daughter mercy. If you need mastery, may God improve your skill. May God improve your value. And I pray for you in Jesus' name. God will not leave you hungry. The God we serve will change your story tonight. In the name of Jesus. You experience his mercy. You experience his grace. Madam, you are a tailor. Where? Samaru Market. Samaru. Market. You have your shop? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Yes, sir. You are a good woman, but you are always entering trouble with those you sold their clothes. You don't used to finish on time. Madam, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is showing me. Don't be embarrassed. This is a family. It may just need you are a very good tailor. I'm not I'm not against you. Don't feel bad. I, I'll say there's some people. That's what I'm saying now. Yes, and there's problem now. They are even angry. Yes, sir. Because they are supposed to sew something for them for an occasion. Uh, and you didn't finish. And now the person is really angry. So these are some of the things we are talking about. As God steps in, let's allow his mercy. Just tell them sorry. Because you I want you would have been far more than you are now. But there is a spirit of delay sitting on your glory. Hold my hands. He must go now. To draw from you again. Again. We've come to draw. 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 Draw from you again. Listen. I want you to mark this woman. The kind of favor this woman will enter into from this night will surprise you. I'm saying it in the open. The Lord will give you favor. 
You are a tailor? Why are you just coming, my brother? We are praying for people here. Father, in the name of Jesus, help our brother to succeed. Hmm? It's unbelief. If God is calling a case to help people, huh? you come out proudly. You don't stand there, you are ashamed. You understand? It's an act. It's You are a student and you are doing it. You people too, you are tailors. See, the tailors are now coming out. We'll pray for your business. Please, all tailors, do a good job. We believe in excellence. Don't say, I'm praying for you publicly. It's not just endorsing you to destroy people's clothes. Do a good job. Praise the Lord. Do a good job and we'll pray for you. There are too many people here. Too school of ministry wants to do their graduation gown in two weeks we are graduating our students 243 students imagine that you get the contract to do their gown if you do a good work god will honor you if you do a nonsense work people will not endorse you just because it's the house of god praise the lord my brother you want to study where I'm a student. oh you are a student yes be okay okay in the name of jesus christ may the lord grant you grace god will raise help for you in the name of Jesus, God will raise help for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are a tailor. In the name of Jesus, God will raise help for you. You need deliverance. I command the spirit. Hi. This lady has oppression in your dream. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the Living God. You didn't come out for tailor, you came out by the mercies of God. You see what I'm saying? This is the tailor now. You see what oh, let me pray for her please i see a wild animal i'm looking at this lady and i'm seeing okay. lord jesus mercy i command every legal access satan has over you when this lady gets angry she can swallow you it's not her fault it's a spirit be free now look how many people are holding one lady in the name of jesus i set you free by the power of the holy spirit let me advise you if you want to enter a relationship pray if you want to marry pray you listen to what i'm telling you you see the body of christ we don't listen and we do i'm not saying this lady is a witch please don't get me wrong but i'm saying you should pray now i'm not condemning her but imagine that you are in a relationship with this lady and you married last week you see this if this lady is angry that spirit will manifest no matter how strong you are she will beat the living daylight out of you when that spirit leaves her she will tell you sorry and then it will come back this is what god is helping us to solve are we together now imagine you are a customer and just because you gave her ten thousand you insulted her when that spirit rises she will tear your clothes or beat you lord jesus we invoke your mercy upon her in Jesus name madam you're a tailor too where judge judge I'll pray for you you're a tailor too where you're in natural state in the name of Jesus may God increase you I speak to your business let it increase experience increase delay lives your life in Jesus name I pray amen if you're in business please lift your hands I want to speak over your life please believe the prayer I'm praying for you there is an anointing that makes people prosper why are you here? You are tailors. You are all tailors. What do you mean you are tailors? This gentleman, you are a tailor too? Okay, please come. You would have come out since, so that our time, you know, our time. You are all tailors. You are a tailor too? I hope we all know that this is the house of God. Please, don't, don't tell lies. If you are not a tailor here, I'm, the prayer will reach everybody. If you are not into tailoring, please don't embarrass yourself. If you are into tailoring, leave them, leave them, please. Provided you are, I don't know what is this with God and tailors, but let's pray because God wants to increase you. You look like a tailor. You see, some of you don't look like tailors. You are, you, are not, you are not dressing like tailors. This gentleman is sharp and smart. He looks like a tailor. 
Ejimi teaches that you represent your brand. If you are a man of God, you show it by the anointing. If you are a tailor, if you are a public speaker, you show it by accuracy of communication. If you are a tailor, you are marketing your products at all times. You don't say, come to my shop. No. If I cannot see your tailoring prowess on you, then I shouldn't patronize you. Father, change the lives of these great people of ours. I'm just going to lay my hands and touch your head. And in the name of Jesus, I pray. May your business step into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. As I lay my hands, please go back to your seat. In Jesus' name. That yoke leaves you now. In the name of Jesus. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Go and increase. Go and multiply, my dear. Go and increase. Go and multiply. Increase, madam. Multiply. Go and increase. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. Go and increase. Go and multiply. Go and increase. Go and multiply. Go and increase. Whether you're a tailor or not, after this people don't come out again. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. In the name of Jesus. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. In Jesus' name. If you're in business, please. Any kind of good, godly business, lift your hands. If you're in a bad business, repent. And do something honorable. Listen, let me mention an example of bad business. Any business that has to do with smuggling drugs. You are a thief. You are not in business. You stop it. I don't care whether you are helping young guys around Samaru connect with a snuff. That's not a business. Are we together? There are businesses that are demonic. Writing exams for people. Writing jam for people. Writing, I will never pray for you for increase. That's not a godly business. Business that has to do with you having an affair with somebody's husband, somebody's wife. It's not a good business. Prostitution, not a good business. Dirty business that has to do with ungodly things. No, no, sir. Let's be very sincere before God. But I pray sincerely from the depth of my heart. The power to prosper. The grace that can come on a business and turn it around overnight. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Listen, please, I want you to be childlike enough and believe this prayer I'm praying for you. And watch what God does. Some of you, you don't have any clients, you don't have any customers. Some of you overnight, just by this prayer, by miracle service October, it will be like a dream. I prophesy to you. Some of you, you have the ideas, what you need is capital. I declare, let somebody rise up who is willing to help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, what you need is an endorsement of someone credible in your field. So that it will open doors for you. May someone who has gone ahead of you accredit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you are trying to sell properties. There's nobody to buy. But if someone comes to buy it, God will use it to honor you. I call somebody to buy it now. In the name of Jesus. Now I prophesy favor on everyone. I decree and declare tonight the main auditorium overflow one two three those following online the kind of favor you have never seen in your life may my god make it happen in your life now receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus esther the village girl became esther the queen through favor ruth the hungry woman who was about to die became Ruth the wife of Boaz. I don't know who I'm prophesying to, but the favor that would change your story in one month, I release it to you right now. I release it to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help that woman there, please. 
There are people from January till now, you have never testified. It's not that you don't want to come out, but nothing has happened. I stand before the God of heaven and I decree and declare, may my God do something in your life that will force you to come and testify. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare I don't know what door has closed between you and your next level you have been knocking for a long time and that door has refused to open I open that door for you right now I open that door for you right now any terminal disease ravaging anyone's body you get healed right now two weeks you are back again you get healed three weeks, you are back again. I set you free right now. Help that. I set you free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The only thing you know that happens in your family is fight and quarrel. No love. No joy. When someone is about to rise, a troublemaker comes. I declare may the prince of peace may the prince of peace step into our homes now step into our families now you are beautiful you love god you are a well-mannered lady no husband I'm led to pray this prayer. You don't hear me pray it all the time, but I decree and declare. Every lady here, ready for a relationship, a godly one, I call your husband to your life now. Every gentleman who wants to marry but no job, no money, the devil is... You. The devil is using lack of finances to rubbish your life in the name of Jesus. The God that can lift a man from a dunghill, may that God lift our brothers here right now. Any project you started this year that you were hoping to have completed by now, and as it is, you need a miracle. I release the finisher's anointing upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. All those writing exams. Shakatos kata pratyalakatos. In the name of Jesus. The grace. To not only write your exams. But to finish well. I release it upon you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. All our, our brothers and sisters who travel from several places to write post you and me in the name of Jesus we give you admission here I don't care who you know or who you don't know we give you admission here now hallelujah school of ministry students are writing their exams by nine o'clock tomorrow in the name of Jesus grace for retention receive it There are other people writing promotion exams. Others, there are, we have a lot of postgraduate students doing their PhD work, research, you know, their thesis, whatever it is. Anything that has refused to come to completion in your life, I, re I release upon you grace for completion. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point and we're done. Give me two minutes. I need to pray for our spiritual lives. Some of you started well with God, but right now you need prayers. You need serious prayers. Prayer zero. Fasting zero. Word life zero. Passion for the things of God zero. You are not bad, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. The fire. The Bible says the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. The fire that must come upon the candle of your destiny. Sokoto Pakata. From the main hall here overflow one overflow two overflow three
take a fresh fire for your work with God. Take a fresh fire for your work with God. Hear me? Some of you, the moment you open your Bible, it's as if something happens and you close it back. It's not normal. I decree and declare passion for the word of God. Receive it right now. Some of you used to pray seriously. You even used to attend the, the weekly prayer department meeting. But things happen. You were offended with God and several things happen in your life and you say, I'm, I've been praying but I've not seen results and you stop. I release upon you grace to go back. Grace to go back to the prayer altar. Grace to go back to the prayer altar. Grace to go back to the prayer altar. Hear me? Those of you who, as you are seeking money, you are forgetting God. As you are seeking marriage, you are forgetting God. It's not that you want to do so. Life is pushing you away from God. Whatever is drawing you away from God, I cost that thing now. Listen, we are rounding up. God and prosperity can go hand in hand. God and marriage can go hand in hand. Whatever must make you leave God to get it is of the devil. May it live your life forever. Now keep your hands lifted. The last prayer point. God is looking for men and women of the spirit. Simple one minute prayers that will change your life now. Lift your hands. I want to pray for something to come upon these hands. Listen. Mm. There must be an evidence if you belong to this ministry. This is a supernatural ministry. This is a ministry of signs, wonders, diverse manifestations. I will not end this meeting without this impartation. I'm praying now at the count of three. Let an unction, let an ancient mantle land on someone's hand. One, two, three. Take it now. Healing anointing. Take it now. Prophetic mantle. Take it now. Grace for signs and wonders. Receive it. May your hands become healing hands. May your hands become miracle hands. Deliverance hands. Favor hands. Hear me? The grace to win souls like never before. I know it's old school. I'm both old and new school. Depending on the one that does not work. Soul winning is never old school. The Bible says he that winneth souls is wise. I pray for you. Grace for a dimension. Evangelism through signs and wonders. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. The last prayer for you. The mantle of honor. The grace that distinguishes a man above his contemporaries. I lay my hands on my head and I prophesy to you. Carry that anointing right now. Carry that anointing right now. Experience strange levels of honor. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. Every expectation you brought here, whether I mentioned it or not, I'm agreeing with you now. Within 24 hours, let your miracle start. Within 24 hours, let your miracle start. Those of you who came from far, before you get to where you came from, you will collide with miracle after miracle. Testimony after testimony. Hallelujah. If there is anyone here in ministry, a man of God, a woman of God, you have a fellowship, you have a church, I pray for you. The fire that is here, 
carry it back to your church carry it back to your fellowship carry it back to your hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.